What's going on, stream? We got two of those transitions. That was a little weird. Was, yeah, that was janky and weird. Thanks, OBS. Thanks, OBS. Such a rock solid piece of software. What's going on, peeps? Welcome to another Tuesday painting stream. Welcome back to the Neferata saga that is like a vampire's life, apparently unending. Um, yeah, you know? Evan make me feel bad about taking a while paint his mom. I don't care. I don't care about Evan's feelings. Okay? It's fine. I just work here. Yeah. Double slurp. Nice. Yeah, that was a double slurp. Did you hear it twice, too? Uh, Ryan Warhart says, I'm trying to figure out what to paint. Currently stuck between Battletech and Minis, Deathwing, or some medieval terrain. I like to paint terrain every now and then to kind of spice it up. It's fun. Uh, let's do a little mail time. Uh, just to kind of talk about some things I got sent recently that seem cool. Tabletop Combat sent me their, or TT Combat, I assume it's Tabletop, uh, sent me what I can only believe is their entire paint range um, in a bunch of small boxes. Uh, not gonna use this today, just cause I'm just painting this model and I'm in the middle of it. I don't really feel like experimenting in the middle of a paint job. Um, but this seems pretty cool. Excited for this. Always excited to try out new paint ranges and see what they got, have to offer. Uh, I got that scissor set. It's from Costco. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, they can see too much at the desk. <laughs> is it zoomed out more than you? I think it is zoomed out more. You can see more of the desk, which I like. I like that you're able to see more of the desk. Um, he, wants to, he wants to look small today. Yeah, I want to look small. Exigen Midnight. Thank you for the sub. We appreciate it. If you guys didn't know, we have a giveaway going on. We kind of always have a giveaway going on. And when we hit 50 subs, we'll be giving away the Seagirl. Wait, Seagirl? Still have that one? Okay, okay. I, I, want to toss it to me? Uh, we're giving away Seagirl. That was Seagirl. without looking, by the way. Was it? Yeah, I was looking at the screen when I threw it. I don't and know, I leaned over to I don't know you why you it. decided to do that. You're like, I'm a pro. Well, I'm making it a little bit harder on myself. Uh, but yeah, this is a classic model from Neko Galaxy. It's the model that actually started the company with. Um, it's been painted many different ways. There's a ton of ways to interpret this uh, bust. It's no, you have to paint it like the art of the box. You have to. Uh, but it's great. It's a great model. So if it's subs, we're going to give this one away to one of the viewers. Not a sub, but a viewer of the channel when we get there. Uh, do you have any idea of what your Elder Army list will be for 10th? Oh, I have no clue. I haven't read a 40k rulebook since 6th grade. I heard that they might be super OP. I always like come on this shit super OP. Uh, I will say that I did look at the list building restrictions for boarding action, which is not combat patrol. Combat patrol is you're playing normal 40k with an army by this box and then every combat patrol is balanced. Every combat patrol box is balanced. Boarding action, actions, boarding action, I don't know what it is. Uh, that's the small version of 40k, but not so small that it's kill team. It's like- it's like, like a small board half force kind of thing. Yeah, and so I did look at the list restrictions for that, because I am building a boarding action Dark Eldar force to play a little small scale 40k with. Um, but no, I don't have any. I don't have any great ideas about what uh, my list will be. Unfortunately. Yeah, I got to figure out what army I'm gonna print. <laughs> if you guys will have any advice for me though on like what I should put in my boarding actions Dark Eldar list, please let me know. What up, Monkey Man the Third? Okay, nice. Did my first combat patrol. Just bought a combat patrol. It was my first time in a 40k and saw boarding action. I have no idea what that was. Yeah, so. Combat Patrol is supposed to be balanced against other Combat Patrol box. I'm assuming you could take a Combat Patrol box and use it for boarding actions, but there are list building restrictions in that version. So you might have bought stuff that aren't, isn't legal in boarding actions. All right. Last we ended the stream, I was experimenting with the head of this thing. Uh, we're trying to find an easy way to paint the color black and a very obvious solution is just to paint it the right, the right brightness of gray, and then apply something like a contrast paint black to it. Like so, like Grim Black or Army Painter, whatever the one uh, from GW is called. It's all about just nailing the right darkness with your initial black. Sorry, your initial gray though. And so I'm gonna, we did one base coat, 
Last time it needs another base coat. I'm actually going to darken it down a little bit when applying this this next layer. I think it's a little too bright gray at the moment. But stream, how you doing? Star Wars Geek, thanks for the Prime sub. Chaos Knights. Well, that's not a unit in uh, my army. Um, perfect stream timing. I just sat down, currently painted my conversion of Troglodon into a dragon with a cool boy tamer for my orc army with the man himself for inspo. What up, Ollie? You're welcome, man. Happy to join you while you're hobbying. Let's get a little focus on that head. Nice. It focus on that head immediately leans into frame. Am I in frame? Yeah, when you're you were almost covering your brush tip with your cheek. That's how I like it. Gross. I like my painting to be not visible. Huddleston's apparently in a very difficult work meeting right now. Huddleston. No, no, no. It's pronounced Huddleston. Huddleston. Yeah. It's hard to hold this model because this is going to be out of focus. That's okay. Let's push a button and it's fixed. Orthodox monks. Thank you. Subscribe with Prime. Awesome. Huddle stunage. Yeah, I think we need to make this name more ridiculous. This uh, this 3D detail it goes pretty deep on the model. Deep. I want to make sure. And get paint all up on the side, which may mean getting some gray or black accidentally on the red, which is okay. We'll just repaint that. How is it not in focus? The fuck, camera? I like that every time you tell it to focus, it gets dark for a second. Yeah. It has to think. Yeah. It squints a little bit. That, yeah, that's the camera thinking, yeah. It's not working. It wants to focus on the main bulk of the body, not the head. Whatever. You guys know what I'm doing. Kind of weird. Like, the moment I start live streaming, it just gets, like, 17 degrees hotter in here. I was fine. I was totally fine before, and I was sitting here for, like, at least 15 minutes. I think the reason that you're getting up is because Tattooed Tabletop just gifted five subs. Woo! Tattoo motherfucking tabletop. Thank you for the gift of subs, my dude. Stola's live says, "Hey y'all, Miniac, did the terrain get to the office yet?" Uh, no, no terrain got to the office yet. Which reminds me, Stola's live is sending some terrain to us. <laughs> I was gonna say, what terrain? Fantasy terrain, no less. Sigmarite mausoleum fantasy terrain, no, no less, uh, or no less, less. Um, it's going to be awesome. Know. It's painted as well. Um, and so we're actually going to uh, we're going to host or raid his channel after this stream, which won't be live, but we're doing that as a way to push some traffic to his stream because he's doing uh, a cool event that I want you guys to be aware of. Did I look up crowd killing? I mean, I can kind of I can kind of figure out what crowd killing is through context clues, but no, I did not look it up specifically. Um, if you get a hold of three fire prisms, that would make, I don't, I'm not playing Eldar specifically, uh, Orthodox monks, but I, I'm playing Dark Eldar. Oh, pain in this model is such a fucking pain in the ass. It's so big. It's gonna be hard to apply contrast paint to this bony thing just because you're gonna wanna wrap the contrast paint around the side of each of these details. And then it's, and gonna, then it's gonna wanna run under the flats. Exactly. So we're gonna have to be kind of careful and in being careful i might just not apply enough contrast paint to really get an idea of what it looks like but we'll see we'll see what happens
Curtis and I should use those TT Combat paints on the TT Combat stuff we bought at Adepticon. Speaking of that, have you played that game yet? No. How could you? The only Eldar indeed. Stole is live. We got gifted a sub from Mike Genie. Thank you, Mike. We appreciate it. 146 gift subs in this channel. I like Raging Heroes, Dark Eldar. Yeah, they do a pretty good job of painting sexy space ladies. That's kind of their shtick over at Raging Heroes. But they also do Heroes Infinite, which is like that STL thing. Um, and they have more of a varied catalog with that. MCXL is paying himself indeed. He's keeping that streak up. You know, you really snuck in there, Evan. Snuck in there? You got to 34 subs. I, I do not remember. 34 months? Months, yeah. I do not remember you being around for so long. I, uh, you know, subscribed early and then did other things with my life and just left the sub going. <laughs> oh, but then you, you never, like, came back to, like... To hit the button to say, look at me. Yeah. I subscribed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Scott, please acknowledge me. <laughs> and if you'd like Scott to acknowledge you in that way, you can subscribe now. That's all right, Stolas. You can imagine what I said, basically. Just about how we're gonna we're gonna host slash raid your channel after this stream. When did they eliminate hosting channels? I don't know. Can like, because that's still the that? term that I think of it as. I don't know. Stolas, can you remind me when that event is happening? I can't remember. Nerd gang, nerd gang. Wait, did someone describe... Did someone describe what crowd killing is? I, I imagine it's just like it being particularly evil in a mosh pit when it comes to flailing your arms and having little regard for who you're hitting and shit like that. But there may be a more specific definition. Not that much gray. Oh God, it's getting worse. I've never understood mosh pits, to be honest. I mean, like when you listen to metal music, it makes you feel a certain way. At least it makes me feel a certain way. It makes me angry, and I kind of like that. I kind of like that music makes me feel a certain way or have a certain emotional reaction. And so, I don't know, it just kind of goes hand in hand with feeling angry or energized. You just, uh, you just want to you wanna hurt someone or something. That's right. When Scott's angry, he likes to hurt people. Basically. I just watched Star Wars Episode 3. A lot of crowd killing in there. Eesh. Oof. Uh, I was reading something and then it went away. 100, 100, okay, it's pretty much, it's pretty, it's just assault pretty much. Okay. <laughs> Mosh pits are dope. My old body doesn't handle them anymore, but honestly, people in the pit can be the, yeah, that, that's the other thing is that like when you get knocked over in a mosh pit, everyone's picking you up like instantaneously. When you drop something, people pick it up for you right away. Um, like they're, Everyone's there for the same reason. They, they just want to like, they're, they're feeling energized from the music and they want to thrash around a bit, but they're not going to, they don't want to actually hurt anyone as far as I'm concerned. I'm sure people have different agendas. Um, all right. We got that gray on there. 
nice and flat. Let's put some of this grim black on there. Army Painter seems to be nicer um, just because the the speed paint dries less quickly. And so you can you can fuck with it a bit more. Uh, mycelium veins, thanks to the Prime sub, 12 months. One year with the Miniac Mafia, loving these movie and music review streams. Spun off some steam, something like that. It's a nice, safe place to do violence in a way that doesn't actually hurt people. Well, it sometimes does hurt people, unfortunately, uh, but it's not, it doesn't happen too often. Speaking of movies, I watched, I feel like I watched three movies over the weekend, and I can't remember the third one, but I watched uh, The Green Knight two times. Uh, just because does that, does that count as watching three movies if you just watch the same movie two days in a row or whatever I don't know does it we'll I don't know we'll let the chat decide um, I realized something about that though because I recently rewatched The Northman The Green Knight and Dune all movies that I saw in the last two years in theaters and when I watched them the first time I was like really hung up on like the execution of the movie. I was trying to figure out, is this movie good? Is it bad? Like, is it doing, am, am I noticing the acting or is it is it not messing with my suspension of disbelief? I was trying to figure out all these things. And I think because of that, I enjoyed the movie less for what it was. And so in watching Green Knight a second time, I was like, this movie fucking rocks. It's so good um, for so many reasons. It gets so many things right. I regret not seeing that in theaters. Yeah. Um, I went to Best Buy, picked up a sexy 4K Blu-ray, uh, made a price match Amazon like a bunch of chumps. Um, I love it when I get a, a Best Buy employee doesn't give a fuck and it's just like, yeah, sure, whatever, man. We'll, we'll price match the Amazon thing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, nice, nice, high quality, good audio soundtrack. It was a lot of fun. Uh, people, it, the votes are coming in. The no's have it right now, but not a lot of people have voted. <laughs> you, you made a poll about this. <laughs> Damn right. Scott, where's a good source to see all Chimera paints online? Um, I have no idea. The one place that I used to recommend people to go for affiliate sales now uh, no longer is a, a website. Well, that's good. Yeah. All right. Hajam. H-Jam. H-Jam. Thank you for the sub. How do you have time to watch movies? I can really sit for more. How do... I, are you saying you you're not you don't have enough of an attention span to sit for thirty minutes, or you, you never have an hour and a half of time to yourself? I make time like it's an important thing to me to watch movies, and so I will make time. Like Amber went to she went to Taylor Swift, and when she was seeing Taylor Swift live, I watched I watched The Green Knight. Like that's what I plan to do from with my evening. Um. I saw Elemental with my kids. Nice. Didn't that movie do like terribly at box office? Just like randomly, like no one knows why, but it just is not doing well. If you like that, you should read Sir, Sir Gawain. Northman is good as an art piece. I think it's good. I think it's good for a lot of reasons. We tried Evil Dead Rise and Barbarian. Oh yeah, they're both really good movies. Yeah, Everything Everywhere All at Once is an amazing movie. All right, let's see if we can get this gray looking sufficiently black with just some. Oh, it's happening already. You know, what if we just disregard the red a little bit? We can fix those problems later. As a reminder, I'm trying to push the black paint down the side of this bony, spiny things. And so in doing so, I'm gonna get some black on that red. I think it's looking okay. shocked actually how much I darkened down the gray maybe it should have been brighter 
We'll see what happens when it dries. Chat, I finally watched a movie across the Spider-Verse. Nice. Have I seen Valhalla Rising? The Green Knight on Prime? I went and bought a Blu-ray. I bet you like Cronenberg movies. I, I do. There's some that I don't really care for. I didn't really care for uh, the newest one, Crimes of the Future. I didn't really care for the sexy, the slugs, the slugs that made you violently sexual. I think it's just called Slugs. But I, I, I like the rest, though. The rest are great. You know what? I think I actually forgot to paint this side of the the bones. Uh, no. Maybe I just missed that front one. Okay. So as a reminder, our goal was to get this to look like black once the uh, contrast paint or speed paint is dried and so we shot for a brighter gray undercoat we'll see where we end up uh, when that's dry in the meantime I will do some more gray highlighting because I was looking at this model just on my gaming table and I was pretty and while you can see like all like the gray dry brushing and some of the edge highlighting we did on the model um, under th these nice lights, I couldn't really see anything uh, on the table. And so I'll just, I'm going to do some more aggressive highlighting uh, on the spines and whatnot. Both actually, I rarely have 90 minutes to devote to, to it. And when I do, I get really fidgety thinking there is something I forgot to do. You know, that's an interesting thing you bring up um, because my wife is kind of that way. And so she has a hard time sitting for an entire movie. Um, but I get it. You know, I, I mean, the, the thing is, is I, I make I make the time to be able to do it. Kind of make like, a, make like a ritual out of it, right? I'm like sitting down. This is my plan for the evening. Kind of like, you know, I make a frozen pizza. Just, to, just good vibes, man. Tom Climbs. Oh, sorry. Is it C Limb S? <laughs> Subscribe with Prime. <laughs> Tom Climbs says, My streams have gotten back into mini painting and wargaming. The streams have? That's awesome, man. Now we're talking. That's a fine neck. <laughs> uh, ADHD? Uh, yeah. I mean, like. I guess you would you would struggle to watch movies if you if you had some form of ADHD. I think it depends. ADHD people can get like really locked in on entertainment stuff. Yeah, just why video game addictions are so crippling for ADHD kids. Constant stimulation. Yeah. But no, I was watching Green Knight and I was just so taken aback by how much they nailed like the mysticism of Arthurian lore. Like the first act of that movie, like the first 30 minutes is just electric. It's like, it's so fucking good. Uh, when the Green Knight comes in and throws down his gauntlet, it's just, uh, it slows down a little bit, but they do drip feed you with uh, other story elements like there are, you know, there are fun side quests it's just like it's just a great fantasy night story it's, it's wonderful well the brush thank you for the prime sub movies are fine to hyper focus on but if there are any distractions say goodbye to knowing what's going on in the movie mm. yes yeah, the other thing is i turn all the lights off like I, I actually eat all my food first so i'll like i'll watch some like remedial content on youtube or something while i'm eating and then i'll I'll like get ready to sit down and actually pay attention to the movie. Make sure all my dogs are taken care of. They went outside. do an edge highlight across these little ridges. I think that would be too too thick 
of a gray line. And so I'm just gonna do little dots. You think I'd like Priest by Matt Covell? Yeah. I, with uh, it's a book. You got to do the reading thing. Oh, the uh, there's a movie called Priest. Wait, Different Matt thing. Matt Covell like the D and D guy? Yeah. He wrote a book. Uh, yeah. He, before he was the D and D guy, he was uh, the head of story development or whatever they called it at Turtle Rock Studios, and he wrote books on the side before that. And kind of during that. And he has two books in a fantasy series. And Priest is uh, one of my favorite books of all time. Wow. It's uh, fucking fantastic. What do you like about it? Um, I can't answer that question without spoiling what I like about it. Well, I want to know what you like about it. So that's I, good. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's tough. Um. His approach to fantasy storytelling is a big divergence from uh, many, many other authors. Um, the the closest thing I can think of is kind of uh, Michael Moorcock's The Black Company, where it's sort of occupying a different headspace than the normal kind of highfalutin sword and sorcery stuff or what have you. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's pretty punchy, particularly the uh, second version of the book after he hired a professional editor. So you read it twice? Um, kind of. Okay. I've read it actually like five times, but <laughs> I only read the initial version one time. Okay. But yeah, that used to be his thing on his on his early D and D videos. He was like, "I don't have a Patreon. I don't do channel memberships. Buy my book." If you want to support me, go on Amazon and buy the, buy the, you know, Kindle version or whatever it was for three bucks or something. I was like, sure, I'll do that. Why not? This guy's made a lot of good D&D &D content. Then I read the book and I was like, damn, damn, boy. damn, damn, boy. Huddleston says, I read them both when I was on my honeymoon. Yeah. Uh, the second book, Thief, is very good. Uh, third book, Fighter, soon, please, Matt. Please. Please. Every year, he's like, maybe this year. And then halfway through the year, it's like, mm, maybe next year. Sounds like me with some of my commitments. Uh, there's a Russian movie called Priest. It's set in World War II, though. It's pretty good. It's another movie called Priest that uh, has what? Who's that one guy who plays Jeffrey Chaucer in uh, Knight's Tale? What's that guy's name? I don't remember. I can't think of his name, but he plays in a movie called Priest as well. There's a, oh, the cheesy vampire movie called Priest is so bad, it's good. I have a soft spot for it. I think that's the one. Paul Bettany. Oh, yeah. Uh, the Vision. Wait, A24 released an RPG based on The Green Knight? Yeah, when it first came out, they had like this whole... Very cool looking RPG with character sheets that like match the aesthetic of the movie. It was very, very rad. Did anyone watch Samsara or Baraka? Based on my review or recommendation please tell me someone did it was an amazing movie you have to watch it no but i watched two movies last week oh you did what'd you want i went to theaters <gasps> I, went, I went and saw the flash oh right okay which i enjoyed excellent um and then i was like that was so fun let's just go to another movie and i went and saw fast and furious 10 oh, i probably that and i bet that was pretty fun yes Okay. It didn't jump the shark as big as uh, Nine did, which is disappointing. How was... does it not jump the shark as much as a prior installment in the series? Listen, in Nine, they go to space, okay? That's fucking true. In Ten, they did not go to space. Uh, okay. However, this is really Ten Part One because it ends on a gigantic cliffhanger. Oh, boy. So, who knows? 
I need my uh, my crossover with like I don't know Ender's Game or something. Have I ever played uh, Vampire the Masquerade? Any of its permutations? No, I have not played anything from that uh, franchise. Not a huge not a huge role player. I stand by my assessment that we just have to find you the right group in game, and you'd love it. Maybe. But I really do love the physicality of board games. And I know that can be included in miniatures, but I just feel like it's an afterthought for the most part. Whereas with a board game or a miniature war game, it's like the it plays main stage. Uh, I don't know if it's an afterthought, but I understand what you're saying. I hope it's not an afterthought. I've painted enough minis for D&D that it better not be. Well, they just didn't design the game with models in mind, you know? Uh, kind of. I don't know. Then again, it'd be interesting to think about an RPG that's designed with models in mind. You're starting to get into the the world of uh, like board games that are basically D and D, where the DM is AI, like whatever Descent or uh, Kingdom Death. You played Frostgrave, but did you play Stargrave? No, I didn't. I kind of prefer fantasy stuff, but I'm I'm familiar with Stargrave. Do you think it's significantly different? How does Matt Colville compare to Patrick Rothfuss in style? Who knows? I might like the cinematic play of the Alien RPG. I mean, it's not like it's there's like a ton of commitment, honestly. Um. Okay, sit rep on the gray that I applied grim, grim black, grim dark black, grim black. Just grim black. Um, it's all right. If I if we do like a zoom in here and then a focus. I don't know. It's all right. It's definitely not a, got some black on the red too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely gonna need to fix that. It's not like, it's not on this particular detail. It could work differently on different details and different models. This is going to need some some extra highlighting. It's not like a one coat solution for for black. But it's interesting though when you compare it to like this step to like what the jaw looks like right now, which was a darker gray, grim black, and then dry brushed gray. I feel like we're kind of almost at a, a similar place. So at the very least, we could save the dry brushing stage, which is, that's good news. <sighs> T Tattooed Tabletop says that he uh, feels a similar way about D&D &D and physicality. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of things about RPGs that I'm not super keen on. They're, they're not bad. I, I'm willing to try, but, uh, I'm not like jumping off the page trying to get a get a session. Uh, yeah, it's a battle. Did you thin the grim black at all? I did not. I feel like when I if, if I were to thin it, wouldn't the dark spots also be less dark? And then I kind of would just lift the whole thing. Not necessarily what I want to do, but uh, why 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 do you say that, Neon's a bell? Because he's a shill for big water. Yeah, he's a, he's a fucking shill for big AP. That's what he is. I don't know. It's it's all about that. Uh... That base, that H two O lobby, trying to, trying to ruin our painting and make us use more water. Probably want, they probably want to chat. You don't need to thin your paints. It's an urban legend. Yeah, you also don't need to drink water. That's also true. You don't need water. We're not made out of water. We're made out of meat. That's why all you should eat is meat. Meat, meat, and because you are what you eat. Meat and Mountain Dew. Yes, no travel. Thank you. Uh, anyone ever played Space Marine Adventures board game? I have no real time for tabletop, but need a 40k fix. Not played since second edition. No, I haven't. There is some like board game at uh, Barnes and Noble that sounds kind of like that. Uh, Iron Painter SP doesn't thin great with water. The speed paint medium helps it keep its property a lot better, as I've heard. Um, no, I, I didn't thin it at all. I was just using it straight up. I put it on my web palette, but that was that's as far as 
thinning goes. That's all I did. Army Painter Speed Paint doesn't thin great with the water. The Speed Paint medium helps keeps its properties a lot better. I see. So Jay's not a shill for Big H2O. He's a shill for Army Painter. Use exactly. the medium. You got to buy more medium. Exactly. <laughs> so Jay, after using the, uh, the rust effect, What's your verdict? Does it live up to the hype or does it not live up to the hype? Mike only shills for Monument Hobbies. Same. We got a couple of fucking Monument Hobby shills in here. Including Jason. Where are you, Jason? Fucking shill. Shill for your own company? Wow. I feel like, I feel like Jason normally shows up to shill about halfway through the stream. <laughs> we got another 45 minutes and then he'll roll in here throwing subs around. Throwing subs around. It's like... Very effective, low-cost marketing, you know? Show up to a stream. Start gifting subs. You're the good guy, you know? I'm the good guy. Buy my stuff. That's what Jason says every time. <sighs> Richard Needs has a diorama idea. Uh, small base, three inch by three inch. Maybe less. Sand base, layer debris like the bow of a boat. And then a PlayStation controller, resin poor, called Rich People Problems. Is this a reference to the recent Titanic uh, implosion? I don't know what, the, what the, the PS controller has to do with anything. I'm not deep in it. Uh, the rust definitely lives up to the hype. It's great, although it's a look you have to commit to. That's that's true. Yeah, you're not going to uh, really reverse or go back. Or if you mess up, it's kind of like, well, that's the effect you have now. I think Scott would legitimately try and kill me if I did that, Mike. Do what? Mike Genie says, I need a channel point redemption that plays a clip from Scott he doesn't know. Oh, God. Do you know how fucking often I heard that fucking song in high school, Mike Genie? Don't tell Scotty. That was my life. I was Scott he doesn't know. And the richest part of that whole experience was that I didn't watch the movie until I was a 30-year-old. So I don't even fucking know. I didn't even get it. I was like, D I hate this movie and I haven't even watched it. And then I watched it and I was like, this movie's pretty good. It's, pretty yeah, it's certainly not bad. And <laughs> Matt Damon's really funny in that role, just showing up randomly. Yeah. It's a good stunt cameo. Don't tell Scotty, yeah. It's very realistic. If you want more of a cartoony, I got you. I mean, I, pre I presume you could. Has anyone varnished on top of... That rust effect, I feel like someone told me they did and it doesn't work out very well. Is that true? Uh, if you if you resaturate it with any sort of liquid, it can break down. But doing a dusting of varnish over it can be done, supposedly. Because I bet, I bet you could do some amount of, like, adding of bright orange colors without totally ruining the effect you have going. But I don't know. I've never really tried I haven't used the rust left. I'm being totally honest. I used the uh, the other one, the the moss, like way more than I've used the rust. I don't know. Scotty legit did it now. This is true. I legit had no idea what they were talking about. That was too bright of a gray. All right, now that we've kind of got a darker gray down, eh, it's too bright still. We can definitely see what you're painting. Good, 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 good. You just gotta get a taser and then just tase me. <laughs> the the habit forming bracelets. What is supposed to like keep you from like smoking or 
you're biting your uh, fingernails or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, leaf pinning is correct. Yeah, you can't basically you can't touch the the products with a wet brush. It will reactivate the dirty down stuff. But I think you can airbrush on top of them to kind of lock them down. But you have to be very gentle about it. Hmm. And I would assume that if you do that a few times to varnish over it, you can maybe then do it. But all right, how's that gonna look on the table? Let's let's take a look here. Give it a little view yeah let's do a channel point redemption to tase scott yeah we're not gonna do that <laughs> not into that idea <laughs> this is how scott's masochistic streak began <laughs> every tuesday for three hours i'm shocked constantly <laughs> that's how we grow the stream yeah you want to hurt me now's your fucking chance <laughs> That's the go live notification. <laughs> Slowly he's turning the dark Eldar. Yes, yes. Is your camera in a different position than usual today? I don't know. It's like higher up or something because we are catching a lot of face to the stream. I think the problem is that it's like it's kind of far back and behind in my head. And so That's what I'm saying. I'm leaning into it too much. I could uh I could bring it a little bit closer. Alright, stream, we're gonna do production things live. I'm taking you with me for a ride. Oh, I went to the wide camp to Oh, that works too. I can, I can see kind of how it's framed. Might have to angle it up a bit. Certainly, I have to do that. Okay. It's way too zoomed in now. They like it zoomed in. Yeah. I like it zoomed in too, but the problem is the more zoomed in it is, I just have such a easier time fucking up the framing. We need that uh, that AI face tracking, but it needs to track the paintbrush instead. Yeah. I mean, honestly, yeah, that would be perfect. Uh, Stolas Live, this is the mount for Neferata from Games Workshop's uh, Age of Sigmar. And I can't remember what this kind of beast is called, but it's something dumb. Dread Abyssal. Yeah, there you go. Giga Horse. Yeah, that is really what it's called, the Giga Horse. I'm like just totally touching this model way too much. And it's so pointy and bumpy too. I'm just like probably wiping paint off of so many things. See yeah, Alex. So Alex shot B-roll, fi like final B-roll of uh, Ben's, like he essentially like shot like, like trailer footage of the model he painted, the witch, uh, because uh, the last shot that Ben wants to do in the class is he wants to have us strip the model. He wants to put it in a bucket of isopropyl. And so we have to make sure that all of the footage of the witch is like nice before we commit to that hardcore. And when we sent it to Ben for review, he was like, this footage is lacking inspiration, <laughs> which felt really bad. Uh, and so we had to, we had to try again. Um, so we, that's what we did today. We like tried to shoot some really nice footage of the witch. Um, because Ben is kind of particular about like the exposure of the shots because it's, it's like a moonlit model. And so he wants us to feel like it's a moonlit scene, not like exposed so clinically. I think we got some good stuff. We'll see if he likes it. Zerkist! Only the put prime. the same dedication into his voiceover. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He, he's so particular. Like, I, I sent him a screenshot of the thing we were shooting today just to make sure he was like, that's the kind of exposure he likes. 
because I think, technically speaking, Ben wants us to underexpose his model, which is fine. I just need to know what he wants. Uh, and he like criticized that you could see the poster tag holding the model to the plinth like barely. And I was like, damn, bro, you care so much about all these minute details. Why did you do VO for me when like you were sick with like a tin can for a microphone? <laughs> I hope Ben's here right now. That'd just be the cherry on top. It's fine. It's nothing I wouldn't say to his face. <laughs> that, someone called it a bony pony. Lol. That is hilarious. Ben is very cool and a very good painter. And I think his is the class that I bought, too. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Because I've already learned everything I can from you, Scott. It's true. Do some of these little stripey stripes. Take a look. All right, not too bad, not too bad. Okay, let's get some more highlights. The further back down the beast we go, the less I'm gonna care about things like hiding a little nubbin on the side of the tail and stuff like that, but I'll get some higher to reach areas. Blue Nine says, so the whole dipping it in ISO at the end, is that like the blue sand mandala thing where you wipe it out at the end or an intellectual property type thing. Um, I think what, what Ben is trying to do with having his model be stripped at the end of the course, ben, ben has a very interesting view of miniature painting where he thinks the product is not the model but the image you take of the model. And so video and photo uh, because that's what people actually see. Like no one really sees the painted model. They just see the picture of the painted model. That and also he wants to demonstrate that you shouldn't clutch your pearls so much with your paint shop. You should be willing to like criticize yourself to the point where it's like, okay, I'm gonna give it another go. Uh, that's a very specific like approach to miniature painting that isn't right for everybody. Um, but uh, that's what he wanted to display in his painting class. And so it's his class, he gets to choose what he wants to do. Sadly, I don't get to keep his painted version of the witch, but Whatever. It's very dramatic. I'll probably film like a YouTube short for it or something like that. Good idea, Mike. Mike Genie says, just copy his footage stroke for stroke and paint your own version of his witch, Scott. Yeah, I mean, I got the class. Yeah, easy. Should be able to do it, right? I don't know how much of a selling point that is for those classes, but when I was first dreaming up a master class course, I was like, I was like, man, it'd be so cool if like the class was like filming the actual process of painting the box art for the model. Because there are some companies that will like just like refilm painting the same model, and it's like seven years after the artist painted it, and they're like, like I can't remember exactly what I did, but it was something kind of like this. And it's like, well, what if I we actually filmed the actual box art process? That'd be kind of cool. I don't know if that's people actually feel that way though. Uh, 
every once in a while I have to like tell myself that it's like, you know, just because you like it, Scott, doesn't mean that other people actually like it, and that it's a selling point. pretty true Epicon was the first time I got to see things in person and it blew me away how much detail is get smoothed over to the lens of the camera yeah it can be an eye-opening experience and also it really separates the uh, good painters from the bad painters because like you can really tell when something is flawless and when something isn't flawless uh, I can dig it it's definitely a vibe to not holding on to things and the knowledge that it can be done again yeah for sure so has Ben the Nietzsche of miniature painters he's the he's the closest to that Men, like mentality that I've ever met. So that'd be a pretty pretty apt uh, explanation or a uh, label for him. I think it's a cool idea. I often buy models because of the paint job on the box and being able to see how it was done is a great idea. Okay, I'm glad, I'm glad to hear that then, Mike. It's translating a little bit. Okay, and get that like kind of little goatee horn thing painted now. Le goatee horn. Exactly. Um, I think I'm pretty happy with how the head and like the spine and the rib cage on the neck is turning out. I did some some more painting on this claw, and I'm pretty happy with that. What that looks like. So I might do some extra to this claw, and then move on to the back half of the model. Uh, I agree. The box art is what brings most people to the models. Without fantastic box art, the immersion of that model in that world and universe breaks. Uh, I don't know what Mike said. We said, except Ultramarines. Fuck Ultramarines. <laughs> yeah, fuck Ultramarines. <laughs> Boom. Roasted. <laughs> Started picking up odd models and painting them for Etsy. There's something chill about letting them go off into the universe and picking up another one to do it all over again. Not for everyone, and there's a few I've done that I've said, eh, this one stays on the shelf. Yeah, okay, I got you. I got you. Um, sorry. So do you just like sell them on Etsy like you would sell them on eBay? I thought Etsy was more for like, no, I guess it isn't. I, I, wrong, I wrongfully assumed that Etsy was more about I'm gonna sell something that I have stock of. So I have like, I have like you know, between five and 10 items. But my wife actually sells home goods on her Etsy store and those are only one off. So I guess it makes sense that you would sell a one off uh, paint job. There's a fair number of painters and a lot of guys who will sell stuff basically at cost. Okay, interesting. Like they'll, they'll paint a model and then sell the model at cost and so they don't earn any money for the paint job? Is that what you're saying? Or they'll like buy a model like new in box and sell it at cost.
leak the home goods store link. I don't know if she still is really doing it. We had a we had a plan to I was gonna paint a vintage Warhammer model. I was gonna paint Neastra and Arahan, the two twin Wood Elf sisters and the dragon. And then in doing that, I was gonna shout out my wife's like vintage store, uh, but uh, she kind of lost interest in maintaining that. So it was kind of a lot of work to go out to stores, find stuff, take nice photos, upload, go to the post office very often. Kind of like running a small little business. <laughs> Looks like, or maybe they're buying clear out armies and selling them for a few bucks. Either way, I'm not, sh I'm not there to compete. A good paint job speaks for itself. But when you sell it, do you sell it at cost? Like, do you sell, like, do you buy a model for five bucks and then sell it for five bucks? My girlfriend's jewelry store in Etsy was what encouraged me to do it. Nice. What up, D Genuine? Someone, oh, someone's selling a Deathcore Krieg helmet, just a one-to-one -one scale on SC. That's pretty cool. Okay, but how do I save this? And some, someone bought that model, Blue Nine, for that cost? I'm not saying that costs too much. I'm just curious. It's a very reasonable uh, way to price your commissions, what, what you elected to do. Okay. Got the other arm looking snazzy or kind of snazzy. So about a dozen. Nice. Okay, that works. The idiot painter played I kick ass for the Lord for 10,000 channel points. Whoa. It works. It kind of works. Now the thing we need is a speaker to blast it at you. <laughs> you could connect to this thing from Bluetooth. I don't have Bluetooth on the computer. I have a little USB plug-in that gives the computer <laughs> Bluetooth functionality. Well, are Could you sure you don't have it? Because that's kind of a new motherboard in that thing. Uh, it's not on the computer? Uh, uh, I don't think I do, but I'll check. Okay. It's very possible that you don't. All right, cool. Let's move on to the, the back half of the spine. And we'll just, we'll just hit these ridges. I won't bother with the other parts of the spiny tail thing. Got to finish this model at some point. That's what I'm saying. Should do the next stream where I just paint the next Mortark in one stream. No, I don't need any more Mortarks. Neferata is the only one I ever want. Okay, then you're able to get some more commissions from there. I suppose that's kind of how it works, right? There's like a lot of tattoo artists that also work that way. They like open their books for a little bit and then they're kind of like, all right, well, 
I have enough customers to like keep me happy for a long time and then they'll just get more customers uh, from their people who like like were found them on Instagram and then picked it that way. Maybe you'll get to a point where you don't need Etsy at all. All right, got some nice little highlights on those ridges. Boston, no Von Carsons. I mean, Von Carsons are well. Yeah, I suppose the only option is Manfred. Manfred's kind of a, it's kind of a wiener. No one likes a wiener vampire. You want a strong, independent vampire, don't you know? Master. You know? That's what Neferata is. She's mommy. Uh... Oh, that would be cool. Yeah, if you could do that. Hey, Scott, have you seen Angry Joe Fighter's uh, miniature game? It's exactly what you're trying to make a 1v1 dueler. It isn't exactly what I'm trying to make. Uh, but I have played it, and it is really cool. I actually really like how when you want to combo in that game, the each card has two circles in the middle of it, and then they are red, blue, or yellow. And when you want to combo two cards together, the first card you play's right icon and the second card you play's left icon have to be matching colors. So it's like very cool how they like it made it feel like an arcade game, but it's still a card game. But the one big difference between Every dueler I've played so far, other than one that I haven't got a chance to play yet, that's, it, it's, it's about dueling samurais, but every single one is a card-based game. You have a deck that you are drawing from and you, de you, you play with the hand you draw. Uh, Unmatched is that way, Ivion is that way, Street Fighter is that way. Uh, and there are even more that are that way. But the, the one that I can't remember, I think it's called Shin, Shinjitsu um, or something like that. I can't remember if that, I haven't played it yet. I did buy it, uh, but that one, I don't know if it needs cards. But I want to see if there's a way to do a fighter where your moveset is predetermined and the RNG comes from dice rolls, but it's like a satisfying kind of RNG. And I haven't, I haven't, I haven't given much thought to it yet. I'm not thinking about it much, if I'm being quite honest. That's, that's my... That's my goal. I didn't say it in the original video, unfortunately. Dice Throne also is a deck builder. If I'm, am I, am I wrong about that? I believe you have a hand of cards that you're playing with. But that was another one people said a lot. People in the video are like, you should try You should try Dice Throne. So I probably will. And there's still things to learn from games like that. I still bought all of them and played all of them. Uh, but I want to try to make something a little bit different. If possible, we'll see. I really dig the Skurgan True Blades, dope monk vampires paired with a weird werewolf. I dig it. MCXL played DRG for 10 channel points. What's, what is DRG again? Remind me. Did I hear a rock and stone? Oh my God. For 10 channel points? Uh, I was doing this as a test. I'm about to crank up them points. The Cheese Herald, you're very welcome. I think. I think, can you put me on the wide camera for Shkosh? They should make a Kislev faction for AOS. That would be kind of cool. I would not mind that. What if you f actually physically strike your opponent? <laughs> and if they don't dodge your Miles attacks goes through? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great idea, Mike. I want to encourage, I want to encourage actual violence. I mean, that is a way to make a dueling game. Actually, you just go do martial arts training. <laughs> Play it on Kill Your Friends, Hardcore Knights. <laughs> For that kind of combat, MCP-like cards with stats and abilities could really add flavor and gameplay styles. Exactly. So it's something like that. Or it could be something like that. There are so many, there are so many ways that you could do it. It could be... It could be cool abilities on the cards. 
But yeah, you're kind of it's missing something. It needs it needs something that makes it interesting. Like the way that Guild Ball picks uh, like what your hero does is interesting. It was a, it was a new way to interpret dice rolling. Like for the longest time, everyone's only understood miniature war games to be roll the hit, roll the wound, roll your armor save, roll your leadership check. That, that's what war gaming is to like the vast majority of people. But it can look very different, and so I'm trying to think of a way for it to look very different that's still interesting and fun. But it's cool. It's a cool thing to think about. How do I feel about the fusel, fusel major on ogre model? It looks pretty cool. By like, a, I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, you haven't seen that new cities of Sigmar model? No, I haven't. No. Give me a second. I'll show it to you. <laughs> the only miniature game with a weigh-in component. Yeah, you got to see what weight band your fucking model is in. <laughs> uh. I got my Miniac models in Brush Coffin today. Man, that feels like such an accomplishment to hear that instead of when is it arriving? You when? know? That's when? such a transition. I'm so happy to hear it. I opened the Witch, the Warrior, and the Ranger, and they're looking flawless. Got each at 75 mil. Fuck yeah. That's what I want to hear. I want it to arrive not broken. Uh, we had a little meeting today uh, with our EU fulfillment partner. Uh, just to straighten out some details. So that should be hopefully starting pretty soon as well. EU, rest of the world, Australia, UK, China, that they're doing everything, so. You know, it'd be sick if we could program AI into miniatures to fight IRL. Yeah, that was kind of an interesting thing that I hadn't thought much about is like how to make a single player version of this game. I don't know what that would look like. But again, that's, that's nothing I have to worry about right now. But I've been reading a lot of books. I bought three books. I bought a, a book by Jeff Engelstein about the randomness in games. I bought a, a game, uh, a book called The Theory of Fun. Uh, I bought another book, uh, which was like a collection of like lessons from uh, people who have designed really great board games put together in like one long book. But like a, it was like a lot of thoughts and like uh, learning lessons all in one book by Gabe Barrett. Raf Raf Coaster made the theory of fun as well, and I, as I, if I understand it correctly, it's a pretty classic book that's used in a lot of schools and college courses about game design. What the? Uh, come back. Could could choose characters that have unique base abilities. They all have their own style with points ratings for battle to purchase extra universal. Yeah, so like each hero would have like a tech tree that they could pick from and items to pick from, and that'd kind of be like your list building. But there's gotta be, it's gotta be more to it than that. Another reason for deck builder component, you can build an AI deck to, I don't, the thing is my selling in veins, I just don't wanna do deck building because that's already been done, and it's been done pretty well. Like if you wanna play a dueling deck building game, just play Ivion. Like that, that they, have, they have cracked the code to make it interesting. They were playing Ivion at the store last night. I know Scott, uh, Scott was telling me that, uh, they're like pretty into it and like yep. they're actually building decks with characters and shit and they have like eight eight or ten characters ready to go like right now yep so i watched for about an hour and the game seems really fun and cool yeah all right uh here is the ogre model that they were talking about okay is that an ogre or is that a giant it's an ogre guy carrying around a dude on his back he oh yeah look at that he looks more humanoid in proportion than he does fat and ogre-y. Uh, so that's why I thought it was a giant, because it seemed like it was massive. But yeah, that was pretty damn cool. Uh, is the guy on him, is, is that like a post on his back or on his head? I think it's like a post on his back, like you would carry like a samurai banner kind of thing. Okay. okay. And then, yeah, he's got his little like crow's nest up there. And he's got a gun and he's like yelling and stuff. It's pretty sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the city's ogres apparently aren't overfed. <laughs> I actually can't stand deck building anymore. Don't know why. I just don't have a patience for it. I think I don't have an issue with it personally. Um, I just want to try to do something 
a little bit different. Uh, and, and, you know, doing things different for the sake of being different isn't always okay, but I think something about your game should have like an interesting hook. And that's where I want to have my hook. Also, I love Underworlds and I love all the games that have deck building in them, but like it kind of feels a little bit like a departure from miniature wargaming. I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but I kind of feel like once you start to introduce that, it, it becomes something other than miniature wargaming. I would say that A Song of Ice and Fire does tread a pretty interesting middle ground where it's like there isn't much deck building, but like when you change your commander, you do get six different cards in your 20 card deck. So that's a little bit of a difference. Um, but I don't know. Are there many Wargaming D20 systems? Yeah, uh, Stargrave and Frostgrave are both D20 systems. And I'm sure there are other ones as well. There are many games out there. There are many, many miniature Wargames. Do you think it would be positive or negative for Song if they introduced more deck building mechanics? I don't think it's either. I would personally find it negative. I, I would not want that. But I don't think it's a bad thing for the game. I think it's a matter of preference. What do you think? I mean, I'm down for anything new at this point. That's true, yeah. I, I can feel that. That's another interesting component of making a game that people play for a long time, which generally speaking are competitive games. Um, you have to kind of, you have to keep your player base interested. I think that the, the commander uh, adding cards thing is a very interesting facet of the game. I, I agree. But it's also one of those things where you can be kind of hamstrung by it. Uh... I don't know. Uh, there, there is the community has had like a million different proposals of different ways to do uh, more card game stuff in the game. Okay. Some of them are interesting. Some of them, I think, are bad ideas. I don't know. Yeah, that's probably true. I, I do think that if you introduce a more limited version of like what commanders do, where it's like, yeah, commanders because they're your commander, they give you uh, three new cards, two copies each. What if every attachment gave you two cards? Like one new card, two copies of it. Might make attachments worth playing. That that is one thing I appreciate. Is that uh one thing I appreciate is that tabletop tat uh tattoo tabletop gifted sub to Brigandier, Brigandige. Uh all right. See you later, man. Thanks for the gift sub. I really appreciate that. Um I, I like that that about Because what's interesting about song especially is that when you compare commanders, it isn't just about what the commander does on his card. It's also about what cards he adds to your deck. And Flesh and Blood does the same thing. It's like, we're all trying to do the same thing, but we're getting there using different paths. And because of that, certain people can be better at different paths than others, and that's a different way to compare them from a power level. It's not, it's not like everything is just on the tin, and that's all it does. Like, there's there's more to the game. It's It spreads out more, and because it spreads out more, certain things can be better, certain things can be worse, and it makes the comparison and, and like, the thinking about list building more interesting. And so I want to do something like that with my game as well. Not specifically the same thing, but just, like, I want to have a large design space so I can make choices like that so the comparisons aren't one-to-one, -one, but they're more interesting. If that makes sense. Fab is, fab is fantastic, yeah. Do you want your game to reflect MOBA-style fighting? What do you think What do you think MOBA-style fighting is, my Sally and Baines? I'm really curious, because a couple people compared my idea for the game to a MOBA, and in my head, a MOBA is a very different kind of game. So I'm kind of curious what you what you think uh, what a MOBA style what MOBA style fighting is. Let me know. Uh, it's where you rapidly move back and forth a whole bunch to try and dodge stuff, but then fail to dodge stuff and die. <laughs> that, that, also, a key facet of a MOBA style game is um, your opponents don't shit talk you, but your teammates do. <laughs> So true. Sad, but true. It's where you play people in chat. Ah, that's hilarious. Alrighty then. Like the ability to kite on a board. Having movements and cooldowns, playing against 
the player and honestly playing there. Absolutely. That is 100% what I want the game to look like. Okay. When I think of a MOBA, I think of three lanes, I think of PVE objectives, I think of five on five, like that's what MOBAs are to me. But if you wanna talk about cooldowns, resource management, kiting, 100% if the game is gonna have that. That's what I love about World of Warcraft Arena, dueling in WoW, uh, Battle Right, those kinds of games. And I absolutely want that feeling in the game. Would PVP Tower Rush be what a MOBA is boiled down to is bare uh, Tower Rush. No, not exactly. Because there's no, there's no building component to MOBA. And Tower Rushing sounds like it's all about the building component. Who's your Dota main, Scott? It's a uh, Void Spirit, one thousand percent. And we're we're kind of living in the go Void Spirit Golden Hour right now. Ever since he got changed to Universal, he is a monster, and I love it. I love being able to build him in like seventeen million different ways. Let's hit some of these sharp edges. How has your experimentation with uh, For Honor been going? Oh man, that, okay. People that get good at For Honor, we should take their brain power and use it on something more powerful, a more, more, more valuable use of their time, like curing cancer or something. Because anyone who can play that game with any degree of like confidence that they know their move set, their opponent's move set, and what they should be doing at any time should be doing things far more important than playing fucking For Honor. Fighting games are fucking hard, dude. Yes. Ugh. It kind of feels like when I was a child, I had an option. Either you play MOBAs for the next two decades of your life, or you fucking play fighter games. And I chose MOBAs, okay? And I'm too. it's too late for me. I there's, don't, I don't think no it way. is. So, so For Honor was the first fighting game that I actually took seriously in my whole life. Like, okay. I had played Street Fighter games and stuff like that previously, but very, very casually. Like... Hey, I'm gonna buy this for five bucks and we'll play it for one night, kind of thing. Okay. And then For Honor was the one where I was like, I'm in, I'm all in on this. And uh, I got wrecked for like the first hundred hours. Yeah, I and can then, see that. And then something happened. Something happened. And then I uh, was a complete terrorist and destroyed people in ranked duels for like three seasons. And then it's like I'm done. <laughs> I've done this enough. But it's it's definitely the learning curve of I think uh, particularly like your first fighting game, but any, any fighting game is like a brick wall for a while. Oh my god, it is! It's uh, and then suddenly it just all starts to click. Part part of part of what you're saying, uh, you can kind of safely ignore. Like you don't need to know your opponent's whole move set. You just need to know their decision points. Like pretty much every character in that game has like some sort of fifty fifty mix up where you just have to kind of guess correctly what they're going to do next, mind games. Uh, but once you know those like couple of things that each character has, then you just know when you have to be like, all right, so I have to go for a parry or a, or a guard block here. Uh, a parry, a guard block, or a dodge, or right. a million other things you can do. Dude, I right. can't even push buttons in the right order, okay? Like, I don't even know, like, okay, at this point in the swing of the sword, I now push the next button. Like, I keep getting too late or too soon, and it's just like, fuck, like, how do I do a goddamn, there's, dude, the warden, who is the straightforward and easy guy, has like fucking 16 combos he can do, and I gotta remember all this shit? Yeah. There's no fucking way. I'm mo never gonna be good at that game. Mo most of those combos boil down to fundamentally like the same five things just put together in different ways. It's like Mexican uh, food. Yeah, yeah, that's probably right. You know, we're like, you're leading into and out of shoulder bashes on warden a lot, Yeah. and it's like, I can do two moves and then do a shoulder bash. I can dodge into shoulder bash. I can do this into shoulder bash. And then what can you do coming out of it? And then you just do it a lot. Yeah. I was actually amazed when I f finally found out that what the game was trying me to do was, was getting me to faint. I was going to do a move, stop 
midway and then continue a co combo in a different way. And I was like, holy cow, that, that is a combo. Faking someone out in this game. Like oftentimes faking someone out in a video game is like more like I'm abusing the game system by like hitting cancel midway through an animation. But no, this game has fainting built into its combo system. Oh yeah, it, it has to be. It's, it's, it's crazy, it's crazy. I love it. Oh. I, I love it and I hate it. Like I would love to be amazing at a fighting game. It would feel so good. Um, but holy cow, it's going to require some investment. You know what we need to do, Scott? What's that? We need to stream For Honor together at some point. I'm, I mean, if you want to shit on me for an hour straight <laughs> and just be like, how is your brain work so slowly? We, we, can, we can do that Fine. or we could play like doubles together. If you want to carry me and ha watch me die repeatedly, we can do that. Hey, I haven't played the game really. Like, I started it up like a year ago for a couple hours, and I was like, yeah, this feels the same, except these new characters are turbo OP. Why does that chick have a gun? I'm out of here. Because <laughs> um, they added a pirate character that's got like a flip. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. Um, I, I played the game very seriously for those that actually care about this. I played the game very seriously until about when Black Briar came out. And then it's like, all right, I've played this game enough. I can go play other games. Uh, Orthodox Monks, you are right. Dota has animation canceling, but that, that's as far as it goes. Like, I'm going to cast my alt. You can hear the sound of it happening. Maybe even my hands wave in a certain way. When I push cancel, that, like, you know, that's it. There's no, there's no combo to that, that choice. But in, in For Honor, you can do a downward swing, faint it, that you convert into a shoulder rush that you push someone over with, and then you fucking whack them. It's like, it's crazy. Like, that's all one combo. It's, it's amazing. Uh, but you are right. You are right. You, you can fake people out in, in Dota. That's definitely a thing people do uh, very often. Uh, someone asked if I played Void Spirit mid or safe. Uh, I played mid. I don't play a lot. I'm not good at the game. All right. You're not a... Uh... So so pro. No, I can't even I can't even claim that title in Dota. I'm so shit at that game. I played it for so long and I'm so fucking bad. It's uh it's my greatest depression de uh, depressing video game story. I love how like every bracket of Dota also like shits on the bracket that's like just below them. Oh yeah. And so I feel like you're I feel like you're an, an, an immortal player, which is the highest ranked. Uh, bracket in Dota, you'll shit like on like legends right below you and stuff like that. It's just like guys, I'm here in Herald and I'm struggling. Okay, it's a it's a great uh, exercise and study in class dynamics. <laughs> sure, <laughs> and how segmenting the populace gives people uh, the the ability to exclude others and place themselves above others. Yeah, really, it's it's a study of people. When when really truthfully. All of them are trash because you're spending your time playing Dota instead of curing cancer. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Video games are for children, etc. Cetera, et cetera. We got a lot of smart people out there that are wasting their brain power. <laughs> Feign that pudge hook and then screw up uh, as you hook your face's void out of his ult. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that is what, that's what feigning looks like in Dota 2. <laughs> Got, gotta love games that explicitly leave in design so that you control your teammates. Oh, yeah. Pudge is the perfect example of that. Yeah, absolutely is. You look at the other MOBAs that are trying to streamline things and make the gameplay a more positive experience. No, of course you can't hook your allies. That's ridiculous. You got to lean into it. You gotta, there are people out there that like to play techies, you know? They're, they're just, they're wrong, but you got you to gotta have it in the game to support those decisions as well. Actually, techies is fine now. You got Please ban Pudge. I was playing with this guy last round and he kept hooking friendlies. Please ban Pudge. Please. <laughs> Worst pull all time. <laughs> Question for the for your painters, y'all painters. I understand varnishing our minis for protection, but do y'all varnish your larger display models? Uh, I don't. I don't really see a point. I don't varnish pretty much anything. That is true. I also don't varnish really anything, including my gameplay minis. I I will occasionally, if there's something that's like really obviously gonna have a lot of wear on it. Like really spiky, pokey bits that are also where you would have to pick up the model, pretty much. Yeah. But yeah. Stolas Live says, "Reminds me of Eve Online." Devs, I got scammed. The devs' response: "Well, get good scrub." Yeah. Pretty much. 
I also always love that, like, every couple of years you see the news story on, like, Kotaku or whatever that's just, like, EVE Online Battle claims new highest record of destroyed uh, money because everything in that game is, like, worth real bucks. It's like, yeah, this battle cost $30,000 because of all the destroyed ships. <laughs> that's depressing. Yeah, man. All right, I would say the bone is done. Good on bone. Bony pony. Uh, now what do I do? The fuck? What's next? Uh, I'll paint some gold. Let's do that. There's a lot of gold details on my other minis. And so I will... I'll continue them on this mini. Also on Nefrata herself. She's got a lot of gold accents. All right. Oh, God, don't kill me. Okay. Exigent Midnight, it's funny you say that. EVE Online is now the first game to have official integration for Microsoft Excel. As of like two weeks ago, I saw a news story about that. Really? Yeah, it has like a plugin that you can... You're <laughs> so they, they said... Uh, the best description of EVE Online I've ever heard is it's like flying a spreadsheet, and now <laughs> it's like literally flying a spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. WD-40 on a sticky airbrush trigger for cheap airbrush. Good or bad? I mean, imagine the reason why it's sticking is because some paint got down in the trigger area and it's gumming up the works, right? And so it's like in this weird state of half cured, half not cured. I mean, it, it probably fully cured, but it's like rubbing on the various elements as it tries to go through a zero clearance area. So the question is, is, is WD-40 gonna take care of dried acrylic paint? I don't know, I've never tried that. Maybe, maybe it gets rid of that. So generally, I, when I'm doing a deep clean on my airbrush, I'll hit it with with strong alcohol, do a little bit of cleaning, and then I go over the whole thing with uh, a wad of airbrush oil, which I think is just um, silicone lubricant, but who knows? Comes in a little tube and it says a wad on it, so you know it's good. Someone asked, any chance you're going to visit a miniature-related event in Europe in the coming year? Uh, I don't have any plans at the moment. I thought you were thinking about going to Monte San Savino. Oh, I am going to Monte San Savino. Yes, I am. This October and early November, late October. I can't remember what it is. Whenever Monte San Savino is. Yeah, I'll be there. Scott's going to be there. And yes, that is, in fact, in Europe. It is. It's in Italy. <laughs> Fuck it. Experiment time. Wish me luck. Good luck. I had the same issue on my Badger at 105. And it made all the difference. Airbrush oils. Okay. Airbrush oil has made all the difference. Essential airbrush oil? Yes. So my question, do you ever go to events in Australia? No, I haven't ever gone. I've never been to Australia. I know my wife would love to go to Australia. Australia so. isn't real. That, oh, I mean, we're going to have a hard time finding it then. Airbrush smelling salts. <laughs> Yeah, I would love to go to Australia just for, like, vacation at some point. Uh, I don't need to, like, plan anything work-related. But, uh, yeah, it would be cool to go to... What's what's a great show in Australia to go to? There's, like, something with can in the name, right? C-A-N something? I can't remember any of them. All right, let's start painting some gold. Hmm. I'm going to paint the entire little gold blood droplets. I'm going to paint them all gold so that I can just paint the gem inside of it. Because they have like this trim around the outside. That's kind of annoying.
It's a British PSYOP. <laughs> uh, biggest events are probably supernovas, but they aren't exactly mini-related. Canberra. Maybe that's so it? Is that like just a place? I know. I was going to say that sounds just like a city in Australia. That's the capital of Australia. Okay. Well, I don't know if that's it. I've definitely seen conventions in Australia before. I just can't remember what they're called. We could just go to the 2024 Australian Toy Hobby and Licensing Fair event. Oh. Really sucks you in, that kind of title. <laughs> <laughs> it's obviously just an industry trade show yeah the fair provides you with the chance to source the most exciting and innovative toy hobby and nursery products headed for release in the coming year all on one easy to use platform buyers will have opportunity to view these new products whilst exhibitors will have the chance to meet an array of new customers and you really have a way of uh, <laughs> making things sound exciting. It's funny how the delivery can really change things. This is true. This is true. So do you know what character you're going to play in Ivion now? Nope. <laughs> I have the errant... Ah, and the witch set. What was that? That's the one I picked up. Scott was playing the illusionist. Okay. And uh, I can't remember the name of the other character being played, but it was a healing character. One thing that's a little bit annoying about Ivion is if you want to look into what characters exist... There is nothing. There's nothing out there that tells you these are the eight heroes in the game. Here's some fluff. Here's some, like, this is what their play style is. Here are some important cards to their deck. Like, there's, there's, that does not exist for the game. Um, which, you know, if you want to make new people play your game, I think that's probably one of the most important things for you to focus on if you're trying to grow a game. Uh, but, uh, yeah, like I like like Flesh and Blood has this wonderful uh, thing in the heroes section where you can click on any of the portraits, get like a really fancy website for each one. It's really nice. I love that. I want that for Ivion. Rogue Hobbies in the chat. Rogue Hobbies. What up, Luis? We're painting Neferata right now. Feeling good. Okay, I'm gonna have to find other parts on the model to paint gold. I think we'll do her throne as well, just to kind of balance out the gold elements. We have this one on the front of the beast, but we should also have other, other options. Peachy's favorite mini. Well, you know, me and Peachy have something in common. I don't necessarily like the model necessarily. Like the model's not bad. It's kind of a pain to paint. It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, it's a big model, which is, you know, that's par for the course. But uh, I love Neferata, the character. She is my favorite. Monument Hobbies, there he is. What up, Jason? I knew he'd be here. He's here. He's got to rep the brand. He's here to give me all his money, the fool. Hey, what did I say about he normally shows up halfway through the stream? He did say that. It is almost exactly halfway through the stream. God damn. Wait, <laughs> we, 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 were, we were just summoning the devil. That's all. We were talking shit about you, Jason. Yeah, That's for it. sure. Definitely. This is just when my lunch is. Uh, okay, okay. He's like the it's a good man. place to hang out. We like it. Yeah, he's the candy <laughs> man. You say his name and he shows up behind you in the mirror. Yeah. 
Have I painted Battletech? No, but I've watched Goobs paint, paint Battletech, and let me tell you, it's not a very encouraging sight. Not saying Goobs is a bad painter, but they just don't look very fun to paint. But I'm sure the new ones are better. Well. <laughs> they're fine. They are what they are. They're boxy robots. If you're into it, you're in it. You're into it. If you're not, well, you don't have to put a ton of effort in because you can drive rush them. That's true. There is something to be Jason said about Jason has a bunch of really sick, actually, well-painted Battletech minis. He was painting them on stream like last month. Jason was? Mm-hmm. 42? Have you seen Catalyst put a product in Target? Oh, yeah. Like, they have products in Target. They have products in uh, uh, Barnes & Noble. They got shit all over the place. Battletech's so hot right now. It is, dude. I love it. It's 25 bucks for two mechs and all the rules, and you get a $20 coupon for their store? Okay, so this is the Costco hot dog of Catalyst Games. I'm not trying to make money. I'm trying to get you sucked into Battletech. I, I feel like with all the positive stuff over the last like five years that I've heard about CGL, that like secretly someone has to be like the devil there or something. It, it can't be all this good. What's Siege? Oh, Catalyst, Catalyst Lab, Game Labs. Yeah. Lab Games. Okay. The, you know, like selling through all their stuff at Gen Con last year, and they had a lot of stuff. Uh, all the positivity around Alpha Strike. It can't be this good. Zerkist says, friends of mine who had no interest in minis or painting have recently told me that they picked up Battletech and are getting into painting. Oh my God. Hell yeah. What is it? What about the game captivated them? I'm so curious. Whenever there is like a big reminder that like what I like and enjoy for anything isn't like necessarily the average or the norm. It's always like, it's always so interesting. Like what is it about that game that is captivating people? I really want to know. It's is it the, the other thing that's really interesting about, about Battletech, um, like locally, it sells at the source. They sell a ton of Battletech stuff. Is, is They're constantly awesome? having to do restocks and stuff. I love it. And it gets played there like once a month, right? Because like we have nights for all the other stuff weekly or bi-weekly or whatever. And it's just like, yeah, uh, there's like one one exclusive day, I think. And then some Thursdays they'll show up and play like one table. But yeah. like models are moving. <sighs> Uh, Lomax B says he loves the lore. Jason says they've done a great job elevating Battletech to the new art from the video games and such without alienating the old guard. Okay. Yeah. Uh, OSW Zen Kiki also says that his stuff is selling fast at his local game store. Uh, Zerkus estimates that uh, mechs are a big part of it, but it's like they're into the system hardcore too. It's the mainstream. It's like the main, it's the mainstream tabletop game. Whoa, it's not 40K. I feel like 40K is like the, the miniature gamers mainstream choice, but Battletech is more like your run of the mill. Is that, is that, is that, is that what you're saying, Zerkus? It, it appeals to a wider general audience? Big fucking robots. I, the, the rules crunch in Battletech is kind of like offloaded to the opposite side, where it's like the rules crunch in in 40k, it's all about like your list building and remembering what all these unique things that you put into your armies and your lists. Whereas with the rules cr crunch and BattleTech is actually just the playing of the game, where you're you're doing it's the again the Mexican food analogy where you're remixing the same like ten things over and over. You know you've got medium lasers, small lasers, large lasers, AC twos, fives, tens, and twenties. Yeah, etc. You know like it's it's, it's very. Very much just like, oh, yeah, this mech has, like, these four weapons, and these four weapons show up on a bunch of different things. <laughs> but then the way the game plays is super crunchy. It's, it's so interesting when you say that. I love the Dendi emotes, by the way, Orthodox monks. Um, but that's when I see, when I think of Battletech, I think of an incredibly crunchy rule set. And generally speaking, people who know nothing about your game hate rule sets like that. Like they don't want 
to sit down and learn the rules forever. They want to play the fucking game. And so it's like, so they're doing something. Obviously, Alpha Strike is, is one thing to make it easier to play. But it has got to be more to it than that. Like, what are they doing that make, makes this old man, crusters, fucking ridiculously crunchy rule set appealing to mainstream people? Is it just big fucking robots? Is that Maybe. What it is? I don't know. But ultimately speaking, I think that... You can be whatever you want. The, the front side of it, because you just like... If you're not doing like custom mech builds or whatever, you just take like four mechs. And it just tells you what they do on the card. And the list building is super simple in that regard. It's just like, here's your lance. Boom. Got it. Okay. And then, yeah, you have a ton of rules at the table. But, like, they're not complex rules. It's just kind of like rolling on a chart to see the result. Rolling on another chart to see the result. Oh, my God. My mech exploded because I got a through armor critical on my AC-20 ammo. And it exploded. And my guy instantly died. That was fucking sick. <laughs> I don't know. I think we need to play Battletech, Scott. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I, I want to know what they're doing. Because if I can make a game that has an insane rule set like Battletech and also shows up in Target, that just sounds like they're hitting a sweet spot that is, in my, in my head, impossible to hit. The other thing about it, too, is as far as I'm aware, it's like as far as rule sets that have been continued to be played and updated rather than something that just like got released and then never touched again the Battletech rule set has been very stable over time other than like introducing new equipment that's uh, super broken on purpose with the introduction of the clans years ago but like the way the game works has fundamentally stayed pretty much the same forever okay. uh, as opposed to like many other war games where they're doing radical shifts about like oh we're going to change the rules about how this works or how deployment works or whatever yeah by the way someone asked what this paint was that i'm using it's the gold that i love very much called necro gold from scale necro 75 gold. necro gold uh jason is saying that the game is very narrative to a fault even um that you have to play narrative scenarios because it sucks to just play kill me kill you uh, you can also just throw stuff out that doesn't break that doesn't like that doesn't like, uh, that, that you don't like, and it doesn't break the game. Like, heat management? Nah, that sounds lame. But Mike, that's true of any game. This is, how, this is how I imagine a basic consumer views the product, right? They buy a board game off the shelf, and they leaf through it. If they, if the average person, you know, struggles to learn games like, what's a, what's a board game with the mid-level complexity? Like Scythe. That, I mean, that's kind of, that's kind of higher up, but like, if they think that kind of game, the average consumer is like hard, like I don't even care if they know of Age of Sigmar, if they read a rule set for a miniature war game, their eyes are gonna be rolling into the back of their skulls, right? And then you add on, like no one thinks about a rule set where it's like, oh, I can just remove that and we can play that version of the game. Like, like house ruling in my head is like a very, it's a very uh, gamer thing to do. Like your average person isn't gonna house rule Dixit or like house rule unmatched um, and, and play that. They're just gonna be like, eh, this game kind of blows. I'm out of here. Right? Like, am I wrong about that? Maybe I'm wrong about that. Necro Gold, you're welcome. Do it. Battletech is very eventless for 50 minutes until the last rounds when everything explodes. Uh, Jason I, says, I'll fly up and bring a million mechs. Let's fucking do it. I'd love to learn the game from you, honestly. That'd be amazing. I wonder if you could do tiered rules, scaling up in complexity. You abs absolutely can. You know what I mean, though? Is, is what I'm saying making sense, Mike Genie? It's like, your average consumer isn't going to look at a rule set and be, and be like, I can house rule these things, and this game is suddenly amazing. That, that, that isn't its selling point, you know? There's got to be a way that the game is packaged, the way it's advertised, the way that first Alpha Strike rule book reads that makes someone feel like, oh, I can do this. It isn't that complicated, which is so confusing to me because when I think about Battletech, all I know Battletech for is just how complicated it is. Maybe I'm wrong. And that's exciting. Necro Gold. <laughs> The video game helps, okay. The greatest uh, thing for uh, BT, add the, add 
the rules as you get confident with the game. They fit like Legos. Nothing makes anything else break by adding or removing it. Do they advertise that? Do they say like out like like in the, in like the front page of the rule bike? Like our game is kind of complicated. We want you to piece it together as you see fit. Is that a selling point for the game? Did they like advertise that, or is, just, is that is that kind of just happen naturally when you play it and get used to it? No, that's the issue with marketing. They need to hire me. <laughs> okay. You know, actually, that kind of brings up a good point, though. If the game doesn't break when you explicitly remove one segment of the rules, then that means that it doesn't break when people misplay that segment of the rules. That is another thing. And, like, forget about it. Oh, we haven't been tracking our heat. We forgot. Oh, my God. Well, it still played okay. As opposed to, oh, we didn't track our heat, and that's why I just completely annihilated you on one turn. <sighs> that's a good. Th that's a good point, actually. So it sort of makes the game more approachable unintentionally. Yeah, and it, 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 it like yeah, and you don't you don't feel that as a game player. Well, you do feel it, but you don't know it's happening. You're like, oh, this game isn't falling apart because I forgot to track this one thing. That's called exception handling in wargaming. Your game should be good when people don't remember all the weird things about your game, which is a weird way to design a game. I've never thought about that, but I watched a, a video from like PAX East of these two guys talking about how to design rules, and they mentioned that. And I was like, huh, never thought about it in that way. It was kind of interesting. Uh, I think people do house ruling a board game when rules are kind of weird, like the Game of Thrones game. Absolutely. When you have a, a group of people and you get together with them once a month, once a week, and you play games consistently, house ruling is the norm. But when it comes to basic consumers, I, I think it's less so the norm. Vince stopping in at what the up? right time. What up, Game Vince? design and battle tech. Hey, Vince, we're just talking about no, we're talking about battle tech and why battle tech. Why is why best. why is there battle tech products in Target, Vince? Why do they? Why does it appeal to a general audience? Give me your best, your best three sentence answer. You know, like don't, don't tell me big fucking mechs. And maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's it's a bunch of small things. But wh why 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 is it in Target? Tell me. I love it. But I want to know why. Uh, game design and Battletech, I'm listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have things to learn from you, my, my good sir. <clears throat> Who's the game designer for FFG? I was just talking about... Uh, someone was saying that we were making up a house rules for the... Uh, Game of Thrones board game, and I'm pretty sure that's one of Christian's games. Who's Christian? Christian Peterson. Who's Christian Peterson? Guy from FFG. I, do I know this person? I think I've never heard of them. Mm, you probably met him. I don't know. Okay. Bitches love Max. <laughs> uh, Scott going back to his software engineering roots with exception handling. Basically, that's what they called it in the video. And obviously it struck a chord with me because I, I had some experience with that. But yeah, exception handling in, in rules. It's like, whoa. Like there's exception handling in Fury of Dracula. If you ever played Fury of Dracula. And like there's a spot in the book where it's like, if you get to this point in the game, or if Dracula made a mistake, like telling you where he's been, do this like there there is literally exception handling because it ruins the experience of the game if someone forgets pivotal information right and so then once you add in exception handling it becomes a strategy now dracula is going to intentionally lie to you about certain things to take whatever debuff that role made for him if it works for that certain scenario it's weird all right vince says sure as someone who's played BT from the 90s. I would sum up to three things. One, people do love big robots. They're cool. Two, it appeals to a certain psychographic profile quite strongly with detailed damage, weapon, and mechanic tracking. It's a strong Johnny game. And three, it has a very well-developed story and lore that allows it to keep people invested uh, through the RPG or just general lore of the war game. Okay, so Christian Pearson isn't just a developer. He is a the CEO of Former CEO. Game Design at FFG. Former CEO, right, because they got absorbed by uh, AMG. Uh, the, the being in Target thing is just a 
choice they made through distributors because giant robots sell well to kids. Okay, so it's kind of like one of those things. It's an easy sell for them. It's like, hey, this is a this is a game. It's got robots in it. Okay, kids love robots. Buy it, Target, and they're like, sure. I'm not going to open the book and read the fucking rules. Something like that. Um, thank you. Tons of people know the Mech Warrior property. That's true. I, I, I am familiar with like the video game world mildly with like Hawken and Titanfall and Mech Warrior. Those are pretty big. So yeah, you're, you're right. That being said, BT has a really hard ceiling of popularity. It's high complexity, has a long S T O O D int. Uh, a long stood in the way of wide L. Oh, it's high complexity has long stood in the way of uh, wide adoption. Um, has it though? I feel like I feel like it, the game is widely adopted. Is it not? It feels like it's more popular than 40k. Like in terms of general consumer, Titanfall is a different IP, but the idea of mechs is in Titanfall, and so it uh, you know big robots in that. Uh, I got to know BT from its Steam game. My mind was blown when I discovered that it was a tabletop game. All sales reports would say otherwise. Well, is there a sales report that says I'm selling to new time buyers? Because that's kind of what I'm curious about. Like, like it's my first time buying a miniature wargaming product. Am I buying a GW thing or am I buying a Battletech thing? And maybe GW is crushing in that, but like in the last 10 years, has Baltech like rose up like a significant amount? And if so, what strategies are they employing? I don't know. It's all interesting. I think a piece of that is literally just like Catalyst Game Labs kind of coming back into existence in a real way. Yeah. Adzathoth is bringing us back to Earth here saying, I mean, Target is also carrying the new Space Marine board game. That is true. But when you think of Catalyst Games... And Games Workshop, it just feels like, like, who the fuck's Catalyst Games? So it's like, how does this tiny company have this reach? And maybe it's just because it's robots and kids like robots. Maybe maybe it's as simple as that and I'm overthinking it. Because Target doesn't give a shit about rules. They don't don't care about that, right? Like no no one's actually like going through the products and being like, yeah, this, this is right for our core audience. This game, the game plays this way. It's similar to all these other games we have in store. No one's doing that for Target. They're just like, fuck it, yeah. Put it on the shelves. It'll it'll sell. CGL. Who's CGL? Catalyst Game Labs. Why do I keep not knowing that? (laughs) What's wrong with me? (laughs) That's twice now that you've done that. I know. Gloomhaven. Oh, right. Okay. Gloomhaven is interesting, too, because I feel like they had, like, a huge explosion of popularity with Frosthaven. Selling like, what was it, 12, 14 million in, in Kickstarter or something like that? It's, it's the double digits in the millions. It's incredible. What did um, they hit on the most recent Battletech Kickstarter? It was a lot, too. I don't, that, that was also a huge amount of money. Dude, you get the rules, dice, and 10 mechs for 40 bucks. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. I have a The joking... various Battletech starter boxes are all like really, really good deals. Okay. Gaston. Not Song of Ice and Fire good deals, though. <laughs> You're not getting, like, 50 minis. Uh, thank you, Gaston Corgi, for the Prime sub. Um, have I checked out Die Hard minis? I haven't. Um, Vince says, I, believe, I, I have a joking belief that BT is a pyramid scheme. No one actually plays the game. They're just trying to get others to join them. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> that, would, that would explain a lot to me. Um... Four plus milli on the last mercenary ones. I think more than seven at the end. Target is dedicating more and more space to board games in general, though. Good point as a thought. So maybe it's a combination of multiple things. Target being interested in the board game space more, investing in it, and also Catalyst Games becoming more popular in all of these things. Target does carry Wingspan. That tile game that I'm blanking on the name of starts with an A, doesn't it? Oh, Man. no. Well, oh, that's a tile game, yeah. But I think the one he's talking about is the one where you are making a tile 
Mosaic, right? Is that the game you're talking about? Azul. Got it, yeah. Azul, thank you. Good game. Azul is a great is a great game. It really it really makes you think about how you balance all of the resources in that game every turn. So it's very cool. I like it. I love I love these chats. Chat. They're good. All right, here's my problem with this throne. I want to paint uh, the top part in gold, which Evan's going to show you soon. There it is. I want to paint this trim in gold, but the problem is the trim never ends. It just keeps going. It keeps going. It keeps going. I want to paint the whole fucking thing gold. Or the do problem I? is this paint job never ends. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> All right. Jason, that's like what I want to run for the stream. I want to come up with a campaign, a narrative campaign idea. You know, you can do that. You should do that. I just don't want to play in it. Is that okay? <laughs> it means we have to find people to play in it. That's fine. I'm sure Chris would be willing. I can't commit to a full ass narrative campaign of BattleTech. I just want to I want to know how the game plays first. Uh, you just com you have to overcommit and then you learn to love it. <laughs> it's like an arranged marriage. Jesus Christ. That's my that's my uh board game model. Is, yep. Uh, just just buy it, okay? Buy it and force yourself to play. Listen, this is like how every Kickstarter works. <laughs> because you go, man, I want to get out on the ground floor, but to get everything, it's $500. <laughs> and then you buy it, and then two years later, it arrives. Kind of different than what you expected. But that's okay. You knew this was going to happen. And then you have to force yourself to play the game and tell yourself that you like it and you made the right choice. <laughs> and then you do that a few times. And that's how you get everyone defending Age of Sigmar. <laughs> <laughs> Game sucks. Uh, I'm joking. I'm just poking fun. Uh, you all haven't played A Song of Ice and Fire in a while. I mean, can't have, speak for all of us. We, I, I mean, yeah, I haven't played it in a while, but I definitely played it sooner than you thought. You think I've played it if you're basing it only on the stream. That said, I play every week. So. That's true. That's true. That's true. It's like playing MOBAs. <laughs> Narrative Legion campaign, go! <laughs> What's my favorite orc model? My favorite orc model is the goblin that comes in the kill team set with like the fucking goggles and he's like Mission Impossible goblin. Yeah, that's my favorite one. That new Mission Impossible movie looks pretty good. Dude, <laughs> the, stunts, the stunts that that man does are insane. Tom Cruise is an enigma. I don't know how he does it. If you don't pick the snorkel head, I hate you. <laughs> what the fuck has a thought? So I love it. I love it when people are just so angry. <laughs> hey, listen, there's a right answer and then a lot of wrong answers. I will fucking hate you if you pick the wrong one. I don't know which go which goblin it is, but I, whatever one Adathoth wants me to pick, that's the one I like. Snorkel Grot is absolutely real, but you're right that he can't hurt you. <laughs> what? My models can hurt me? I hope not. Good thing I lock them all in this office. Yet. <laughs> Honestly, I, I love all of the sneaky orcs in that box. I'm not going to lie. I've been low-key kind of like fiending after some orcs lately. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to buy a ton, but I love the ones in that kill team box. They're really cool. The commandos, yeah. Oh, I also like the vehicles. Like the race car is fucking cool. 
OG gas in a sock will hurt you. <laughs> True. Oh, for sure. That little pewter chunk. Yeah, dude. <laughs> That'll fuck you up good. <laughs> That's a funny bit in the video. Someone taking a bunch of pewter models and putting them in a sock and beating someone with them. I want to see that in a, <laughs> in a skit now. <laughs> Scott, you got to play Big Pig for AOS. Big Pig? What's Big Pig? Is that, is that, is that, is that Savage Oryx? Probably. The, I think they mean the new model with the guys riding on it. Oh. Oh, yeah. Like they're kind of like Savage Oryx, but in 40K, right? Like yeah. they're, they got, yeah. It's like a, it's like a shark looking animal, right? Uh, I think it's like a, a big pig. Hang on. It's a pig. Okay. I thought there was like a shark looking animal that orcs rode on in 40k. Oh, yeah. In 40k, yes. They were, they had, there's a shark riding thing. Okay. Okay. Not, not talking about AOS. Oh, yeah. You said you said in AOS. Duh. There's a good horror plot. A haunted model that comes to life at night and messes with the paint jobs on other models. You know, I almost made that exact same skit like four years ago. For Halloween, no less. But it was more... The model came to life and killed you, not fuck with your paint jobs. This this guy. Uh, whoa. Oh, yeah, the guy just standing there. <laughs> he's like, I'm chilling, bro. Yeah, he's got an axe. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I don't need to hang on to anything. This is a smooth ride, bro. Yeah, I remember that model. I love the glow on the map. Oh, thank you. Commandos are great are great for a true one box kill team. One box has all of the specialists and two extra commandos. So you gotta worry about extra miles or magnetization unless you want both close combo weapons for the knob. DR4 mins are uh, Dramus. Dramus, thanks for the, sorry. Thanks for the prime sub. They're gonna say no. It's Dr. Formus. It's Dr. Formus. Uh, thank you. I uh, love the content. Please keep it up. You're welcome, man. I'll try. I feel bad because right now I'm like super excited about making gaming-related content, but like I really don't want to just shove a bunch of gaming content down your throat. And so I'm just gonna I'm gonna chill on the gaming content. Jason's throwing his lunch money around again. Who is? Monument Jason. Hobby just gets twenty subs. Twenty. Fucking subs. Jesus. Thank you so much, Jason. I appreciate it, man. I will pay for battle time. <laughs> hey, if you wanna if you wanna come over and teach us how to play battle tech and bring some painted minis, or hell, even unpainted minis, Lord knows we uh Jason's got enough painted battle tech robots to field like almost four full forces at once. Okay, let's go. Let's play. That'd be a lot of fun. It's a lot of lunch money. Don't threaten me with a good time, dude. Seriously. If you, if you want to make your way out here, I will absolutely get you on a stream, get you on the podcast, make it happen. There are, of course, other reasons to come up here, too. You know, food. Oh, yeah, there's good food. I feel like there's kind of good food everywhere. Well, is there a state that just has a bunch of just no good food? I can't say anything without offending someone, except maybe like Idaho, because no one lives there. Boom, <laughs> roasted. Boom. Double. Ohio, Nebraska. <laughs> uh, just start naming whatever their their perceived rival state is. <laughs> uh, Don Don is that D U L N Donerin? Thank you for the prime sub. We appreciate it. We got ten more subs to go before we're cracking out this giveaway, y'all. Ten more subs, and then we are giving away the beautiful Sea Girl from Neko Galaxy, their original bus they came out with. Beautiful model. Ohio chili is fucking gross, says my psyllium veins. All Ohio chili is gross. My psyllium veins, weren't you the guy who like went and bought that frozen pizza that I said was like amazing and then you went and made it and then gave me that feedback? Was that you that did that? I'm pretty sure it was. If so, you fucking rule. Which feedback? That it was good, but what would be better is uh, not eating pizza. Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I 
What a shit take, Evan. <laughs> Captain McLean just subscribed. Thank you, Captain McLean. She's got a cool design in the back of her chair. It's got like a bunch of skulls and bones and things. I think I'll paint that part gray and then I'll just give it the contrast paint love. The contrast paint kiss, as it were. And uh, just, it'll be good enough. Sure. Be like, be like more bone. Uh, Cincinnati chili is a regional thing, but it ain't special. Yeah, I can feel that. Same, same with like cream cheese wontons is a regional thing in Minnesota, but they are not special in the slightest. All right, see you, Jason. Uh, Florida also has shitty food if you're not in Miami. Okay. Yeah, I was in Miami and the food's pretty good. I'll stick to my good Southern food options. I, f- I kind of feel like every state, if you go to like the the capital or some city, you're gonna have some good some good food options, like for sure, right? Except Idaho. Except Idaho. <laughs> Idaho has finger steaks, huh? Thank you, Captain McClane. He says he's excited to see where my display model game goes. Yeah, we'll see. <sighs> what was I saying? I don't know. Something, something. You were shitting on pizza for some unknown reason. <laughs> <clears throat> Just trying to be controversial. Okay. Drive up engagement. That's fine. <laughs> I'm going to start a feud with pizza. Yeah, you're just... Wow. That's incredible. You're, you're, you're so far ahead of the game right now that you're, <laughs> you're being argumentative just for retention's sake. That's incredible. What can I say? Sometimes I like to go online and wind people up. <laughs> oh, man. That was like my pastime in high school. It was great. I never said I was that mature. <laughs> no, I mean, like, I... I don't know why I stopped doing it. <laughs> uh, are you going to enter the next Golden Demon? I did tell John that, yes, I am going to do it. And I do feel the need to uh, live up to that promise. So, yeah, I, I would like to. I would definitely like to. Give him my, give him my all. See what happens. All right. Let's work on this design on the back of our throne first because we're likely going to get a bunch of paint all over it. And then we'll come back in for that second gold layer to clean up any any mistakes I inevitably cause, like, right now. Oops. What was I thinking of? It's fine. It doesn't matter. Andor is the best Star Wars content ever. Even better than OT. There's your spicy take. Uh, oh, right. I forgot Evan doesn't like Rogue One. My biggest problem with Rogue One is I can see how great it could have been. I forgot why you didn't like that movie. Must we relitigate this on stream? If you don't want to, you know. I don't really care. It's just uh, a chat knows. They brought it up to troll me, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. I don't really like Star Wars. Is that a hot take? Scaver. All my fucking high school friends hate Star Wars, so I'm used to it. I was the only one in my friend group in high school who likes Star Wars. Feels bad, man. I'm gonna use the hair dryer for a skosh. Okay. What is? <laughs> God damn it. What is a Star War? I can Star War. Cool. Yeah, no, I understand Nox Geek. 
That's why I'm sure. How do Star War? <laughs> Man, oil paint stays wet for a long time. Uh oh. For a very long time. Did you I just like put your finger in a glob of oil paint on I, your desk? Or I something? did. I thought that it would like crackle up and fall out of the bottom of my cup, my little plastic cup here, but it did not. That doesn't matter. It's a little bit of my thumb. What is Kith? I thought episode eight was heart garbage and nine was an ugly band aid to fix the mess. Yeah. Kinda. I definitely agree with that. Don't use oil paint often? Nope. I do not. Eight and nine. And, well, yeah, all three of them were really bad. <laughs> I think eight was especially bad. <laughs> I don't know. Nine. Nine was worse than eight. That is not true. I, I don't know, man. They, they're they neck and neck for me. Of egg, Lots of extra badness everywhere. <laughs> extra bad. Why, why is there an artifact hunt where you have to, like, align stuff to the wreckage of something that has been there for, like, 10 or 15 years? Because scavenger hunts are fun. Or 20 or I don't know. It's just dumb. It's just dumb. It doesn't make any sense. And not in a, like, release your disbelief. It's just, like, it's just bad. Hey, Scott. The Wishes of Dathomir set comes out on the 7th for Shatterpoint. Any solid plans for streaming it soon? Okay. It's so interesting you say that. Uh-oh. Because me and Curse were talking about, me and Curse were hanging out last night. And we are talking about Shatterpoint. And he was like, I want to play that game. And I was like, you know what? I want to play it too. The only thing I'm waiting for for Shatterpoint is like a faction or like or like a, a collection of models that I'm like, oh yeah, like this is for me. Like I was, I was dilly dallying with Age of Sigmar for so long. And then finally, Soul Black Gravelord came out like sometime like in version two. I can't remember if it was the beginning or the end. Uh, but like, I'm kind of just waiting for my, my faction that I want to love to come out. And I was like, I love Darth Maul and I like the idea of Sith witches, but the one they put in the game kind of just looks like Darth Maul. It's a bald person with robes. Eh, like I want something different and unique, like, like Sith, like Sith witch is such a cool idea and it needs to be executed on. So if that box. Sith witch just sounds like a worse sandwich. Yes. That too. And I love bad sandwiches. But if if the Sith Witch box is, is cool and I, and I like it, if, if I like it really is the important thing, um, then I'm 100% I'm into that game. I'm not like super sold on like a faction of models just yet. I uh, just want two more clone commanders. Or not clone commanders, excuse me, clone commandos. So I can make the squad from Star Wars Republic Commando, which is the best Star Wars video game. Yeah. Give me a Saw Gerrera faction. I can see that. Um, someone said I'm gonna drop 500 on an Ewok art. So I get that. I get playing the faction that's goofy, okay? Like I would definitely play Gnomes and Blood Bowl or like, I, play, I played a Gnome in WoW for, for like my Alliance Warrior because I thought that was funny. I get the idea of, of, of memeing. Like I think, I, think I think memeing is a worthwhile expenditure of your money when you're picking out an army, okay? If you want to meme on people. Uh, Evan is objectively correct about Republic Commando being the best. All right, Mike, calm down. Okay. Gungans, get out of here. Ban that person. We don't like Gungans here. I mean, the females in Maul's species are dark side witches. What is, what, what's a side witch? Is that oh like my a, God. Is that like a side bay? <laughs> but it's like, a, it's, it's not your main Dark witch. side witches, Scott. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a side witch. <laughs> <laughs> we love a Gungan King. You shut your filthy mouth. <laughs> Why does chat love all things that are bad? You guys like mechs, Tau, fucking Nids, fucking, fucking, what else do you like that's bad? Gungans? Come on, guys. Dark side of the force, baby. 
uh, have Evan look up Witches of Dathomir and Jedi Hunter's Shatter Points. Okay, let's do it. I want to see it, Evan. All right, give me a second. All right. I actually already saw this, but what's your, what's your hot take? Is it good? Is um, it bad? Uh, Maybe it's you. It's. I hate the art. Okay. I think the models are fine, but the art on the box looks goofy as hell to me. Okay. It's not a good start. If the art is bad, it's not a good start. But it doesn't mean the models will be bad. Browser source has just not been working right this stream. Dead by Nap God with the Prime sub. Adathoth is saying the most unquestionable thought. Maybe it's you who has the bad taste. Definitely Holy not. Shit. This is my world, Adathoth. You fucking live in it, okay? Nids suck. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, Death Grand Alliance LFG. I don't know that. I don't know what that means. Dad bod nap god. But uh, thank you for the sub. I appreciate it. It's a lukewarm take. All right, there we go. No, reject. I will not give you my cookies. All right, here we go, Scott. Okay, okay. Show me the minis. It comes with totally not Darth Maul. And. Which lady? Wait, show me totally not Darth Maul again. Is that not Darth Maul? It's not Darth Maul. Oh, it's a different Darth Maul. Yeah, it's like, you know, Darth Maul's brother in law. <laughs> I don't hate the. Uh, okay, the one on the left kind of shit. One on the right's good. Let's give them bows. Yeah, weird space bow. I like the I, I like the lady. She's, she's fine. She's. I don't like her temple head. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's kind of she's got like a cone head thing going on with her hair. The guy's torso, Darth Maul's brother-in-law. <laughs> he uh, he's got a big torso. Like he's yeah, like, he's uh, he's Darth Dorito. Yeah, he's yeah, he's Ken Barbie doll Darth, like 100. percent He's actually Darth Paul. <laughs> no, that's too easy. Fuck, how did we not think of that? Uh, someone said that the design in uh, Shadowpoint is sus. Um, eh, it's good. And it's you know, it's not terrible. There's some good shit. There's some bad shit. I would say it's 50-50 for me. I am down with the chick, the main chick, and also the knife wielding bald baldy. I wouldn't have mind seeing the, the the conical hood on her too. I don't. You know, I, I kind of like that. It was like, it's kind of a cool thing that ties the the females together. What scale is it? 50 mil? 40 something mil? I don't know. It's something weird. Yeah, it's like the same sort of scale that MCP is. Where they're all a little, little, little bigger. A little bigger. 38? 40? Yo, she bald. I don't mind bald bays. I just like the cone head as like a design choice. And I want to see it replicated across the model. This is okay. I'm not like I'm not dying. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I'm not dying. It's kind of cool. That you can, as many lets you zoom in and out on the art. Yeah, that, that's actually really cool. Um, that's super. It's super nice. Did a good job on the eyes. Team fuck eyes. Team fuck eyes. Not coming in strong. If you're paying the box art and you just, uh, phone it in on the eyes, you're not you're not giving them their money's worth. Yeah. Like, what if you were like. You were, what am I trying to say right now? You're in an interview to be the box artist for AMG. And they ask you, <laughs> like, like, are you team fuck eyes? And you're like, yes. Yeah, it's like, oh, you're fired. <laughs> you don't stop being a side witch until you get your cone. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so these are all these are <laughs> these are all Darth Paul's side witches, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude! All right, show me the related items. No, not recommended items. Related items. Okay, it's just the other launch stuff. I thought maybe it would bring me to other interesting new Shatterpoint products, as opposed to the interesting old Shatterpoint products. I want, I want. So many Shatterpoint things. Oh, there's two terrain sets. Yeah, there are. One is like clearly, ah, oh, fuck. Clearly a better deal than the other one. Interesting.
Coneheads meet Dark Eldar? I feel like Dark Eldar are kind of already Coneheads. Have you seen their helmets? They're ridiculous. Fistful of Credits box is Hype 2. All right, Evan, you know what to do. What? Are there other Shatterpoint things that, I, that are that are I, like, I've seen the Ewoks? I've now seen the Witch thing. I know. Well, ben. the Ewoks are Legion, not Shatterpoint. Oh, okay. Yet. Oh yeah, this box is sick. Uh, okay. Because these characters are. It's funny. She's cool. What the zooming into the fucking face? Um, I'm not. Maybe it's just the angle that this photo is taken from, but I'm not completely sold on like the sculpt of her head, where the hair comes out in particular it looks a little funky from this angle. But maybe again, that just might be literally the way they posed it. This guy. Now we're talking. Yeah, he's pretty cool. What's the other guy? <laughs> okay. <laughs> what the fuck is this team? <laughs> Bat dude and row boy. <laughs> uh. She's an example of Star Wars characters. Star Wars writers taking a background character and giving them a whole story. I'm excited for the Grievous box. General Grievous. We'll scroll down a little bit. What's uh, what's that one? The Jedi Hunters. Yeah, who the fuck are these guys? Okay, I like that guy. Yeah, I'm surprised the chat didn't say uh, check these dudes out. These are like uh, these are from stupid the Obi Wan show. Yeah, well, I think that's actually the shape of his head, and he's wearing a helmet over him. He's got a stupid shaped head. Let me tell you. Yeah, fuck yeah, dude. Who would? They kind of look the same. I wish they were a little bit different. Cause they have I both, don't. They, I like uniforms. They're Empire. Yeah, but they have the same pose. <laughs> like, they're both doing the same kind of thing, you know? Uh, but, no, these guys, fuck. These guys are awesome. I want these guys. They were in Rebels before Obi-Wan. Oh, okay, sure. Whatever. What is, what is that? Is Rebels a show? Yeah. Is it a Disney show? Uh, no. Yes. Both. OSW says, I did say to check out the Jedi Hunter's pack. No, you didn't. They're you can't all, prove it. Yeah, what the fuck? You can't prove it. Uh, they're, all, they're all Sith Inquisitors. Yeah, give me man. give me my clone commandos. Hell yeah. yeah. Those guys are pretty fucking cool. Yeah, baby. Those guys are pretty cool, dude. Show me the other one. What's the other one? Oh, shit. <laughs> you only get two clone commandos. Show me the other models. You get... <laughs> yeah, okay. You get Jedis in, like... Head garbs. Yeah, they're all right. They're fine. They're Jedi. Let's put them in a robe. Give them a lightsaber. Jedi done. Jedi. No one expects expects the Sith Inquisition. Yeah, if I could do Sith Inquis, can I do Sith Inquisition and Darth Maul? Is that an option? Oh, if I can, I might convert that dude's head because he does look stupid. Oh, you mean the the guy with like the weird horn helmet? Yeah, but it's not even horns. It's just big, big helmet. Yeah. There's so many things. There's so many boxes. Yeah, they're announcing these like well in advance. We've got. Uh, hey, that's a nice fucking paint job and a nice model on Amadala. Like the whole thing comes together really nicely. Oh, there's a mold line on this. Come on, box art. Seriously? Is that a mold line? Do you see it? Down her whole fucking leg in her in her hip. I don't think that's a mold line. I think that's actually like. Oh, a seam? Oh, it's a seam. Okay, good, good. It, it, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. It just looks a little funky because it's in a place where you would expect a mold line. It's not a painted seam. It's a sculpted detail. Yeah. If you want to have a seam that doesn't look like a seam, make it a recess, not a protrusion. Or if you want a seam that doesn't look like a mold line, I mean, sorry. Um, all right, these are okay. This box is hype. All right, show me the Mace Windu one. Not that I care Party's about. Party's over. Mace Windu, really. Oh, man. Tactical Rock. 
tactical mace windu yeah yeah it's pretty good i enjoy it eh, i ain't about it they aren't clone commandos that's what matters <laughs> they aren't gonna like blow up the whole planet of geonosis just for fun are there okay Yes, this is the other one I haven't seen. Whoa, Robot Man! Yeah, this is the guy from the uh, prequels. Can't remember yeah. his name. General Grievous. Oh, Grievous, yes, of course. Night Sisters! Oh, he's got three eyes. It's so cringe that they named all the boxes after our prequel memes, though. No, that's amazing. I don't... That they're all, like, named after, like, lines or stupid memes. That's... I'm so in on that. I don't fully understand. What's... what? So, what's the name of this box? So, this one is the Appetite for Destruction Squad Pack. What's what's that a reference to? I don't know, man. I don't... I don't care about no Star Wars. Well, th how did you seemingly know what this person was talking about? No, because, like, all of them are named after stuff. So, like, you've got the high ground terrain <laughs> pack. Yes. Uh, and, like, the hello there pack. <laughs> Is that the Obi-Wan one? Yeah, hello there, hello General Obi-Wan Kenobi squad pack. I like, love that. It's all stuff like that, and it's amazing. Yeah, that's Twice fun. the pride for Do Dooku, which is another one of his lines. So. Come on, that's fun. Yeah. Who doesn't like that? Is there more at the top that we didn't see? I don't think so. Go higher. Oh, it's dice pack. Okay. Yeah, there's like some of this kind of stuff. What is that? This is the dual pack between Vader and Obi Wan. This is the one that's like very controversial because it's you get two guys, but you get the terrain board that you can't use for any gameplay purposes. But it's ninety bucks. Yeah. Just to get Vader, basically. Vader holding what? He's uh he's lifting it with the force. Okay. It's floating behind his hand because he's gonna chuck it at Obi Wan. First thing I do when I paint that model, I'm ditching that ridiculous looking thing. Right, ready for it to be like molded in, like with a big divot <laughs> in his cape and stuff. And like he, it's cool enough to have the force hand right there. We don't need the fucking floating trash. I mean, what they did for for he's vacuuming. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Zambies. <laughs> what the what they did for Magneto, I thought was much cooler. Where they ha he is literally throwing stuff around, and so Magneto comes with him, and then two additional bases of just like metal crap that he's throwing around. So he's doing his like lifting pose, but then he moves around with these things and rams them. Yeah, into people. that's cool. So do that? this pose, and if you want him lifting something, give give me it on another base. And yeah, give Vader the rule where he's got like a little thing where he's just constantly flinging shit around that sounds awesome that does sound awesome but this box costs 90 dollars, so you can buy darth vader yes there is a spider-man doc ox set that costs similarly okay uh, so they're kind of they're they're redoing uh an idea they've done with mcp let's see if i can just pull it up here spider-man versus doc ock yeah this is it it's yeah same sort of thing it's two characters in unique poses and they come with a little display board and it's a cool idea uh but it's kind of annoying that that's like the only access to darth vader right now yeah that's a good point is that they should just release the models in blisters or something i really love the stock Ock though even though he just looks like he's going to break the. oh prison. yeah that is cool it's something cooler than the one that i painted yeah the Spider-Man is also similarly like, eh, he'll break right away, but he's really cool. <laughs> what the hell? Our giveaway counter went down. Piece of junk. So Shatterpoint, when? I gotta get my hands on some of them Jedi Hunters, bro. They look pretty fucking cool. I don't know, man. I don't know. The, the problem is, is that I just have so many things I want to do, and I just don't have enough time to do all of them. I, I want to. I really want to like finish up my Age of Sigmar army for my Escalation League, and I really want to play Shatterpoint. I really want to make you know work on my own game and. But I'm just one dude. I'm one little dude, you know? And so I just don't have, I don't have enough time to do all these things. But I want to. I want to do all of them. I want to get in. I want to play every game. You know, I want to be into all the games. You know 
what? I'm not going to try to wash. What the hell? We should be at 43. What the hell happened? That's all right. I'll just. I was going to try to let this wash like, like leak over the edge, but because it is the old GW glossy wash that you sadly can't get anymore. Um, I am not going to do that because it will show up on the red as significantly more glossy than um, the red armor that I've already painted. And so it's hard to make it seem like it wasn't a mistake. Battletech, Battletech, Battletech. How are you going to paint the bone? Kill me. <laughs> Kill me. <laughs> When is the roast of our hobby desk dropping? Whenever um, Cephalair Games decides to review the ad that I made, the video is done. Uh, but I'm running an ad for Gloomhaven and Jaws of the Lion and the new RPG and... Sorry, not, not Jaws of the Lion. Uh, Gloomhaven 2.0, Gloomhaven the RPG, and also the miniatures of Gloomhaven. That's what the whole ad is about. But they have not looked at the ad yet to review it. So I don't know. Whenever they do that, though, it'll come out. It's pretty much done. Gotta make a thumbnail. I think I haven't done a thumbnail yet. All right, cool. We got the gold elements painted. Washed them with some Nuln Oil Gloss. And then when that dries, we will highlight it with some citrine, citrine? No, it's called something else. It's ridiculous, peridot alchemy. Perdido? Okay, so it isn't primer? You're killing me, dad, dad bod, nab god. You, you, you continue to wound me with your questions. Like a knife to the heart. <laughs> roast me right now, I bet you won't. I mean, I got nothing to roast you with. Gloomhaven 2 electric bo boogaloo, exactly. To be fair, they're busy making millions of dollars on back at the moment. They might be a little bit busy, but I figured they'd have a guy whose like responsibility is marketing, you know? And can and can like be like, yeah, that's good or that's not good. Uh, not Simon, but Cephalare, Ceph Cephaflare Games, I believe is how you pronounce it. They're the developers of Gloomhaven. The company that um Who's the guy who made Gloomhaven? What's his name? Oh, I used to know this, and now I don't. Isaac, Isaac. Child, Childress, Isaac Childress, how do you say his, uh, yeah, how do you say that last name though, how do you pronounce it, Childs, Shields, Childs, Childs, I don't know, Chitlins, Chitlins, <laughs> Oscar Isaac, <laughs> you know what I bought a year ago, <laughs> Isaac Asimov, what was that? My Marvel Crisis Protocol minis. Oh. You just make new friends. <laughs> I'm not a good friend, okay? <laughs> I don't think that's true, Scott. I can't play all games. <laughs> oh, you can. <laughs> oh, you can and you fucking will. That's right. I bought these models. All right, uh, let's play the claws while that wash dries. It's deep blue. Nice. Yeah, Mike Dini, why did I buy MCP minis? Why? Well, who knows? I wonder. Dota 2 is more fun for me than solo board games. I haven't tried a solo board game really yet. I've, obviously, I played Demon Chip, but I was playing with like two other people. So it's like, it's not really playing a solo board game, is it? Solo Nobre? Solo Nobre. You're gonna have to have to. You're gonna have to set up a date with him, Evan. Huddleston knows. I like having my MCP minis just for display. Oh, thank God, Dad bod Nap got stopped roasting the shit out of me with this with this with, with this question or comment rather. Final Girl? There's a movie called Final Girl. That's fun. Movie? Game. Or sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Based on the, the typical horror trope. Yeah. Uh, Final Girl is interesting. Okay. The base game 
isn't enough to play. The base game is like the, all of the things that you need to play other than a final girl. So you buy the base game in one expansion to play it. And the expansions are really, really small and cheap because of that. And it's pretty neat. They've got it in the source. You should check it out. Why, why wouldn't there be a version of that game in box that has everything you need to play the game? I think that they're trying to... This is my cynical brain. They're trying to uh, train you that you need to buy the expansions. So you, you've you already bought one. Now you can keep buying them. Okay. But that's, again, that's cynic brain. Maybe. I think I'm on a 70% win rate with pause for hyper stone sniper. Bro, if I'm going off lane and my off lane support by gets sniper, I'm immediately tilting. Immediately. What is what is stone sniper anyways? What the fuck does that even mean? Hyper stone sniper? That's an insta report. <laughs> Just because you saw it on the DPC does not mean you get to do it in my fucking game. <laughs> Damn. Look, let's be honest. We're all shit at Dota. Just pick a fucking support with a stun and let's just try to kill people. That's all we really need. Scott, we've been doing this together for a year. Doing what together for a year? This. Streaming? Uh, Yeah. I, I came out here to unfuck your shit on July 1st last year. Wow. Chat, Evan's been your honorable chair for a year. Do you like him? Should we get rid of him? Frip. Chat gets to do your fucking yearly performance review. reviews. Your yeah. performance review. Don't I know it. Let me quick eat a bunch of crunchy stuff on Mike before you <laughs> tender your judgment. Because <laughs> it's not time. You get pushed back so fast, and then once you get your skull basher, it's game over, man. I mean, that's that's like a strategy for sniper that's as old as time. Getting getting skull basher on sniper, dude. That's like Dota one strat. I love it. So confirm he's actually a share. Yeah, just play ogre magi. Honestly, yeah, dude. Give me a big, beefy Ogre Magi. People who play like Melee Pause 5, they're fucking shads, okay? I, uh, I'm painting the claws blue. And the only reason I'm doing that is because I did that to the dragon, the zombie dragon. They were painting like this really deep navy indigo blue color. So I'm kind of just redoing that on this guy. I'm not like super enthusiastic about it. Um, Cause there really isn't anywhere else to put the blue color really. Um, maybe on the spiky bits on the head. I don't know. Three out of five stars wouldn't change a thing. What does that mean? I think he's rating me. By referencing oh. your review of B-Movie. Oh, nice. Wouldn't change a thing. Uh, Almost like five out of seven stars. Perfect film. Exactly. Five out of seven. Would have been a four out of five, but you told me I couldn't have Portillo's. <laughs> I, I never said you couldn't. I swear to God. Gilded Lion Minis just keeps... Just keeps wounding me with other suggestions like pause three anti mage. I'm never playing Dota with you. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're gonna tell me you play Pudge Carry. Again, all of these things are valid strategies when someone with 10k MMR is doing them. Yeah, this this is the key. Is which one of the two of you has the higher ranking? Oh, I, I without a doubt, it's definitely not me. <laughs> what exactly is a soul blight? It is. Can you define soul blight for me? It's when your soul is rotting. Oh, because you're so evil. Ah! <sighs> love me some. I hate to love and I love to hate. I'm mean. <laughs> Love me some Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. How do I get in on this giveaway? Well, first, 
we're gonna get seven more subs. And then, when seven more subs happen, then Evan tells us how to enter the giveaway. Don't gotta be a sub, but you gotta be a viewer, and you gotta be here right now. Well, not right now, because we need seven more subs for it to be right now. That's true. I can get behind Carrie Invoker, okay? Not, not, not that crazy. I mean, Invoker does everything, because he's the best. He is. Well, Dad Bod Nap God is getting us more towards that giveaway by gifting five subs. Woo! Dad Bod Nap God! So now we're just two away. Two away. Quap, pause four, build ag, spirit vessel, scythe, and oops. You're just a normal Quap mid. For only the price of your Prime subscription, you can support a Miniac in the Twin Cities. A Miniac near you. Tab guy, then <laughs> RG and Omega. All right, we hit it. We're giving away a sexy bust from Neko Galaxy right now, and it looks like this. Evan, tell them what's tell them what's good. Tell them the good news. Well, first I have to set up the giveaway, and then I can do the spiel. Okay, he's gonna give you. In the meantime, I'm gonna show you all what you're missing out on. Well, I mean, I guess we're there right now, so you're not missing out on anything really yet. Cool beans. Thank you guys. Appreciate the uh, gifted subs from RG Hanomic and also the eight or so from Dad Bod Nap God. Here's the model. It comes fully assembled because I assembled it for the ad. Um, not a dreadfully hard model to paint assembled, but uh, look at this fucking bust, bro. Look at it. Okay, let's, let's, let's zoom in. I have, there's no fear here. Zoom. Look at this. Look at this fucking fig. Look at, these, look at these cast details. I didn't clean this model. Like I didn't, I didn't, I don't remember. Well, maybe I didn't, maybe Alex put it together. I can't remember. But it's just so nice, so nice. Oh, look at that. All right, that's the giveaway. And if you'd like to win this bust, you can enter by typing exclamation mark moist in the chat. There are restrictions, though. If you're in a country that doesn't allow you to enter random giveaways, please don't. You do not have to be a subscriber, but you do need to be a follower so that we can send you a message. This giveaway is going to run for, oh, I set it for 20 minutes, so I guess we're running a little long today, Scott. We're going to run until 420? Well, that's what we're doing. Exclamation we're mark moist in the chat. Blaze a new trail. Of course, these giveaways are only possible due to your support, so thank you. You heard the radio, man. Without subs, there are no giveaways. Without subs, there are no dubs. Let me tell you. Also, without subs, there's no me. That's true. If the stream didn't make money, well, at least enough. If we didn't break even, I would uh, I'd end it all. You might want to zoom that back out a little bit. Oh, you don't like it when it's Omega zoomed in? I, I actually like it fine. I just know that you didn't touch it after... Zooming in on Seagirl. Appreciate I appreciate the heads up. Let's just see if I can keep it in frame for more than 15 seconds. If we don't reach 50 subs this stream, the stream will explode. <laughs> if you don't get 50 more subs, Evan is homeless. <laughs> there we go. That's how we incentivize subs next time. We don't need to giveaways. We'll just threaten people's livelihood. I'm close enough to homeless regardless. I live in squalor. <laughs> I live in squalor. Amber Amber wants us to move to like a two acre property where we can build like a YouTube facility on our property because she hates paying rent for the office. Would you, would you would you drive thirty minutes north to uh to 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 draw my complex? I mean, get in a big enough complex and I can just put a trailer on it and sell my house. Oh my god, I don't know if I'm going to allow that. <laughs> get yourself like 30 acres. I'm going to go home and tell Amber and be like, yo, Amber, Evan wants to live on our uh, YouTube facility. What do you think about that? You know, it's like a 10 minute walk to Evan's hut. <laughs> Evan's hut. Bang on the door. <laughs> Evan, it's time to scream. The fuck? I'm stumbling out of a pile of cans, dog barking. All right, let's do it. I'll do it. It's stream day. <laughs> yeah, like I, you just sleep for a week straight and then you wake up and now it's time to stream. You'd be shocked at how true that actually is. <laughs> yurt squad. Just a bunch of yurts. Oh yeah, there we go. Your hashtag yurt stream. 
<laughs> the fuck? Pro the problem is to buy a property like what you're talking about. It would be more than 30 minutes. You think, I think. Do you think it would cost? You think it would be more than thirty minutes to get like a one and a half, two acre property in 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 Minnesota at a reasonable price? What is these days, what is yeah. reasonable? Well, I suppose that's a broader conversation, but I think you have to uh, northwise. You have to go all the way to about Pine City, which is if you're if you're at the northernmost edge of the cities is like a thirty minute drive, but from here it would be like forty or forty five. Okay. As a thought, there's only one truth in life. As soon as you're done moving, you are starting to ponder when the next move will be. What did As a Thought say? Do you really want to move again after all the effort of setting up the office? No. And the only reason, uh, As a Thought, by the way, thank you, Adric Knight, for the sub. The only reason why I would even consider that, and this isn't going to happen for years. This is like a, this is like blue skies, like dream right now. Blue skies. But Amber does not like Minnesota, and her end game is to leave the state. And I don't want to do that because I've kind of, kind of like developed uh, people here, connections here, and it would like it would, it would, it would measurably fuck me up to like leave. It would be, I'd have to take a couple steps backward. I don't really want to do that. And so the the compromise is all right. We'll buy a timeshare in Florida, and we'll own whatever office space we uh, we work on or we pay rent for. So that's kind of like that. That's her compromise. Don't buy a timeshare. Buy a condo. Yeah, whatever. Buy a con. I, I, buy a condo. Buy whatever. So, something like that. Um, Sky, it's just a, Sky's just a YouTube channel dedicated to building new offices. Exactly. Uh, choose a crane and move the new office to the old. Yeah, exactly to the new new office. Yeah. Got 15 minutes left in the giveaway, exclamation mark, moist in the chat to enter. Please don't enter if you're not allowed to enter raffles. This bust could be yours. It's true. By just following this channel. By to, some some degree of logic, it already is yours. Wow. you Every one of you 50 subs, you own a 50th of this model. <laughs> sure. It's the community's model. We're selling, we're selling stocks. No. <laughs> we're not. Would yet. you like to buy one share of this bust? <laughs> Scott becoming a snowboard. Hey, if, if it means that my wife doesn't need to move out of the state. And the other thing as a thought is that if 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 I'm moving to a permanent solution, which is like 10 years plus, then I'm more okay moving. But again, this isn't gonna happen for a while. Finally, a cult I can get behind. It's a timeshare bust. <laughs> Communism, finally. For two hours, you get to paint this. <laughs> Or you get to claim ownership of this paint job. <laughs> okay. Let's keep painting these nails. We're going to take some... Neferata's getting her nails did. Getting her nails in. Her and her abyssal dread. Uh, we're going to take some bearing blue and mix that in with our deep blue to get basically an edge highlight. That's kind of all I really care about doing. Mike Genie, yes, that is the answer. What does Amber hate about yet? Winter. Yeah, it, it's just winter. It's a pretty, it's a pretty cool place to live. Otherwise, um, but uh, it is, it is. Uh, like it's a pretty cool place to live in winter too. Whoa! <laughs> uh, no one acknowledge Evan's joke. Okay, that was all the acknowledgement he deserves. Sure. But yeah, it, it really does. Fuck I think with her personally, depression. I think the ten year solution, Scott, is to just wait it out because it's getting warmer. We say that, but it's so fucking cold in the winter. I don't know. This winter wasn't that cold. It just snowed a lot. It just stayed around forever. That too. Well, actually, we definitely did the we don't believe in spring, no spring thing this year. Yeah. Where it was like, hey, remember winter? Let's be done with that. 80 degrees. Let's go. Yeah. 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 We definitely skipped over spring this year. Hit the gas. For sure. I love this shot of the back of your head. It's my favorite. I'm not painting. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> okay, now I'm painting. We're back to melanomas. Is that like the Latin term for your head? No, melanoma is a type of skin cancer. That's what I thought, but then I was like, maybe it's based on like some Latin term for a body part. Lummox Beast, um, if Scott could afford a private island... There would probably be other things that would happen before the private island. 
Like what? I don't know. But I think that uh, I think that you would invest in a larger, more extravagant studio space. I think we'd have some PTZ cameras. That too. We would definitely have more stream cameras. <laughs> All right. That edge highlight is nowhere near bright enough to make this worth it. So let's mix in some more bearing blue. A dad bod nap god, the bone was a experimentation over several streams as far as how it was painted. Also, this is not the bone arm is not the greatest place to to judge my bone work, okay? My boner work. There are the the neck and near the head looks better. Yeah, I didn't wanna I didn't wanna put so much fucking effort into the into the black bone because it's so big and challenging to paint. His bone is so big so, and challenging. So big. <laughs> Why does this hand look like robotic? Because GW doesn't know how to sculpt organic shapes. Everything needs edges. Okay. It's like, yeah, the knuckles definitely look like they're like a robot hand's claws hinged. Aracon Bravestorm says, God, this music is something my grandparents would listen to. Well, you make a playlist that's full of bangers that lasts you know three what? hours. Hang on, hang on. Okay. Your your grandparents listen to like lo-fi beats? Because that's what this is. Your grandparents are low-key fucking Mega chill. Big Bing chillin' or whatever the fuck people say. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, all right, sick. <laughs> He's like, essentially, that's what my grandparents listen to. Now we're talking. All right, fucking sick. It's hard. It's hard to come up with a bunch of interesting music that uh, is can simultaneously live in the background um, and also is changing enough to not be noticeable that you're listening to the same thing over and over again. I'll mix it up. Will you? Yeah, yeah. I just uh, put on the horror music that we used for the uh, demon <laughs> ship stream. I don't think you have to worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I've got some dark blue claws. Cool. Is this zombie hyperdrive? I don't know what that means. <laughs> My grandparents study and relax. <laughs> zombie hyperdrive is a band. I got you, I got you. I've been binging recent-ish horror movies lately that I haven't seen yet. I should see how... Tell me. Tell me which ones. Tell me. I, I can talk about horror movies for fucking ever. Which ones have you watched? But you should, Go ahead. Yeah, see if I've seen them. I, I haven't seen a, a, all recent horror movies because some of them are really fucking bad. Ready or Not. Ready or Not's pretty good. Renfield. I haven't seen Renfield yet. But I do want to see Renfield. Is that really a horror movie? No. 
It's like a horror comedy. Yeah, that's what it seems like. I haven't seen it, but the the title. The same. What? I, I haven't seen it either. Oh, okay. Saying, like vibe wise, it definitely seems like comedy with a touch of horror. Yeah. Add the sauce. Recently saw Evil Dead Rise, Bird Box, Bar- Barbarian, and Smile. Cool. I haven't seen Bird Box, but I have seen the rest of those. Um, they're all pretty good. I watched Hereditary for the first time the other day. What'd you think of it, Forty Kane? Godly banana lord it says we were talking about Star Wars Eight before. That's pretty horrific. Nice. Ayo. <laughs> Barbarian was disappointing. Okay. X and Pearl were godlike. I kind of disagree with that. I don't know. Everyone loved X, but I didn't think it was really anything particularly special. It's just a genre that we haven't seen a movie from in a while, but it was still, it wasn't necessarily doing anything new for me. And then Pearl, I feel like we really focused, we didn't focus enough on Pearl, the psychopathic killer. We kind of focused more on Pearl, the girl with like daddy issues. And that's not the interesting part of Pearl. Like I want to see the murderous Pearl more than the one who's like, you know, emotionally troubled. That's not why I watch a slasher. It wasn't terrible. I didn't hate it, but I was kind of, I was hoping that there was, there'd be more of that. Uh, Slayer Street, you are 100% right. It definitely felt a lot like Texas Chainsaw Massacre in a very good, in a very good way. I loved it. Next is Midsummer, or however you spell it. Basically like that, but with an O instead of a U. Have I seen Hellraiser? I, I have seen the original Hellraiser, um, and I was not a huge fan of it. It was all right, but it, like, it was just like, felt really misguided. Barbarian was exactly my thing. It's pretty good, yeah, Barbarian was pretty good. It was interesting how Barbarian changed what kind of movie it was like halfway through. It was like, okay, we're not a horror anymore. We have expended our horror juice. It is now time to move on to a different kind of movie. I kind of, I kind of like that. Unfollows and leaves. The ritual is awesome. I did enjoy that quite a bit. There are no good Hellraiser movies. That being said, they're all worth watching. <laughs> the ritual is amazing. That's a really good one. I think that one, I think creature features in general kind of run out of steam. And that one isn't isn't an exception. Like when you kind of get to the end, which I don't want to spoil anything for anyone who hasn't seen it, but it does get a little kind of like, okay. I get it. Reanimator. Reanimator is good. It isn't a new one, but it's a good one. Got four minutes left on the giveaway. Exclamation mark moist to enter only if you're in a location that allows you to enter random giveaways. You are right. The creature design is still cool, despite it maybe getting showed off a little bit too early in the flick. It is still very cool. You watch the 60th anniversary cut of The Wicker Man? That is one I haven't seen yet, but it's definitely on my list, and I haven't seen Dagon either. Um. I would love to see Dagon, uh, which is a movie by your boy. What's his name? Oh, no. Don't, Chad, don't tell me. Dagon. Dagon. Chad, don't tell me. Chad, don't, don't do it, Chad. It's the guy. It's the guy. Is it the guy who did Crimson Peak? With the thing. It can't be that guy, right? It's not the guy who did Crimson Peak, is it? In the place. No one said a name. Wow, I'm surprised. Brett Favre. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Who 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 did I've seen that name before? Who did Dagon or Dagon? Pikachu? Yeah. The Green Knight and Barbarian. Both trafficked in a late 70s, early 80s vocabulary I grew up loving. Really? I wouldn't put those two in the same category, really. You know what? I'm going to watch Green Knight again. Fuck yeah! Tonight. You got a Blu-ray player? No. Wait. Kind of. Do you? I, I have a HD one if you, if you want to watch it on Blu-ray. I could probably source HD from the internet. Give it a shot. Yeah. I, I don't know if I was able to find it on anywhere that was... I think it was on... Was it on Apple TV? I have that for free now. Okay. Well, never mind. 
Thanks, T-Mobile. <laughs> Buy an Android phone from Google, get Apple TV for free. Um, the Green Knight, it, it the Green Knight is a weird movie. Okay, I, I want you to go in knowing that. But if you just release your inhibitions and feel the rain on your skin, you know you really channel Natasha Bedingfield. Uh, you, I, it's it's just really easy to enjoy. But if you pick it apart, I think it gets a little weird, you know. Speaking of T-Mobile, I have to go to the T-Mobile store tonight to apparently fix their problem for them. I also have fucking cell phone issues at the moment with Verizon, and I I hate <laughs> cell phone issues. I don't have cell phone issues. I have. Uh, they gave me a phone for free. <laughs> oh, okay, sounds like but they've been. That was what that call was that I had to step away for a minute. They they were trying to figure out how to charge me for the phone they gave me. Oh, okay. They're like, we need you to come in. <laughs> I probably have to like re-sign the form or something. Like, yeah, I don't want to come in, you know? I mean, like, that's kind of where I'm at, but I also Doing don't okay. want the cops to show up and be like, you stole this phone. <laughs> I'm like, you can clearly see the transaction where I sit there and then they hand me the phone and I set it up and I leave. <laughs> Green Room is amazing. Did I ever watch the old trauma movies like Toxic Avenger and Sergeant... The Buki Man, NYPD. No, 40 seconds left on the giveaway. Have not seen that. 40 seconds left. If you are new here and you want to get in on a giveaway, exclamation mark voice in the chat. Got to be in a country slash state slash whatever that allows giveaways. Exclamation mark voice in the chat. Aside of the siphoning gas bit, Green Room really nails the touring band punk lifestyle. <coughs> no idea why I'm moist, but okay. Oh, you fucking know, Power Thirst. Don't, don't lie to me. Correct. Picking the winner. If you aren't here, I'm going to send a bomb to your house. Jesus. Oh, my God. It's Huddleston. <laughs> Hasn't he already won something? Yeah, you know what? Wait a minute. Didn't you win a giveaway already? He did. Mm. Mm. Uh, are we making new rules right now? Mm. <laughs> All right. We're not going to change it now. We're not going to change Actually, I'm, I'm thinking about this, and it's... Um, Sus. He, he won long enough ago that I think it's fine. It is fine. But if it was within 30 days, we wouldn't have a choice. All right. Here's, here's what I got to say, though. I think in the future, no no double winners. No double winners. But he gets it. <laughs> Y'all are fucking haters for people who mispronounce my name all, all, the, wrong, all the time. Mispronounce my name wrong? So how should we be mispronouncing it? Because you're saying we're mispronouncing it wrong. Get fucked. He got you, okay? He got you. Now now you're Huddle Sun forever. Huddle Stun forever. <laughs> Eat my ass. Yeah, baby. Gotta the love Huddle's someone tonnage rule. Technically correct. <sighs> yeah. Nothing well, nothing beats it, man. We're nothing gonna we're gonna it. definitely institute no no double winners in the same calendar year going forward. Yeah, 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 yeah. You fucker. How could you? But you got us this time. <laughs> Oh, there's all the battle tech. So what do you think? Should we peace out this stream, Scott? For sure. I got the first I got the front two claws done. The gold's all washed up. You know, honestly, I said I said two or three more streams, but like seven or eight. I mean, I could I could finish this next stream, I think, if I just focus on Oh my god. It. I have I gotta paint the, the, the cushion on her chair. This is going to be the best 4th of July celebration of all time. I got to paint the, the cushion on our chair. I got to paint all the the gems hanging from this gold thing. I got to highlight the gold once, and then paint the base, and then it's done. And then mount her. Mount her. Oh, and I got to paint the middle, the midriff of her dress, which is like a smaller piece of fabric. I think if I focus up next stream, Nephi's donezo. Hey, I'm doing the bit because I have to. He's doing it, chat. Careful how you set the rules. Huddleston will end up winning back to back December. We have <laughs> yeah. all your info handy. 
There's a okay. All right. Good point. There's a cooldown. Okay. Shipment. I was promised Neferata in perpetuity. <laughs> well, next week is Fourth uh, of July, and we are streaming, right? No. No. Wait, what? Tuesday is the fourth, baby. Is it? It is. Let's Scott's see. thinking. Live Let's production meeting. Let's see if there's anything on the, the old calendar. I don't think so. Why do I have Lucy Lou's birthday on the calendar on this computer, Scott? Who's Lucy Lou? Um, uh, Asian actress from... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Charlie's Angels and stuff. Bunch of stuff. I don't know. Sometimes I put a thing on the calendar <laughs> to remind myself like years in advance because I'm like doing a funny bit or a joke. And then I forget why I'm doing the funny bit or the joke. <laughs> Wait, is it today? Is her birthday today? Apparently. That's funny. All right, Scott. You have clearly followed some sort of celebrity uh, birthday calendar. Oh, really? There's several people? I, I'm clicking on various dates, and it's like... Yeah. If I look up Lucy Liu, am I going to find some kind of like porn actress? People, no. are, people are making it seem like it's, it's that kind of thing. No. Oh, is she the, is she the one... Um, who is in, uh, wait, what the fuck? What is she known for? Kill Bill. Yeah, that's what I said. You said Kill Bill? I did. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, wait, Chat. no, I said Charlie's Angels. I'm lying. What the fuck? <laughs> it's pretty much the same thing. <laughs> is it also not her birthday? What the fuck? What's my ca- what is this what is the calendar what is my calendar saying? Maybe maybe you know someone <laughs> named Lucy Lou that has a birthday today as opposed to the Lucy Lou that the rest of us know. <laughs> it's, Rufus is very angry that I don't know Lucy Lou. Scott Ty Yeah, M80. what the hell? Her birthday is December 2nd. What is going on here? I do not know. All right, so are we streaming next week? I don't have anything on the calendar. Let's say yes for now. Tentatively, we're going to do fireworks in Nefrata next week. Oh, that's why Mike Genie was telling me to tie M80s to my most hated models and blow them up. Because <laughs> of 4th of July. I mean, like, I am kind of down to party on that idea. What about, like, the one, the Greyjoy models that I got a bunch of splooge on? <laughs> Just blow those ones up. <laughs> like, attach them to bottle rockets and stuff. Yeah. Alala. I, wonder, I wonder if my uh, the people... I rent from would be okay with that. You know? I mean, we're going to be the only people here. This is true. We can get away with anything. Fourth of July. No jury would convict me. This <laughs> uh, guy has a calendar full of wrong celebrity birthdays. It's the best. It's the best joke. You know, there's, there's the other idea, too. We could do a game strip for the fourth. Uh, just, just to... Mix it up for no reason. Pretty much. And then a game stream on Thursday. Or a paint stream on Thursday. So here's the thing. Next Thursday. Uh-oh. If I'm, am I wrong about this? Next Thursday is June. I might no, be wrong about no, this. No, no, no. This Thursday is still June. This, this Thursday is still June. Yeah, this yeah, yeah, Thursday, yeah. there's no game stream because it's fifth Thursday. Oh, but then I'll be... Oh, no. I'll be in Austin, Texas next Thursday because I'm visiting Black Sight Studios. Hmm. Okay. I wow. think about that. I feel so left out right now. Do you want to go? I mean, kind of. You're not invited. Shit, man. <laughs> Shit. Going down to Texas to visit Black Sight Studios, not even going to ReaperCon. I know. Well, you know, when someone's like, hey, we want to pay for your flight down here, you know, it's very convincing. And then I tell Amber, I'm like, hey, you want to make a vacation out of it? And then she's like, yeah. And then it's like, okay, game over. Uh, Shatterpoint on the 4th? Sounds like a good idea. Y'all, it's hella hot down here right now. Be careful. It's well, plenty hot up here, too. Yeah. It's not quite Texas hot, but it's plenty hot. Anyway, we anyway. should wrap it up. It's almost 4.30. Let's do it. Okay, I'm going to send you over to a channel that is currently not live. The oh. reason the reason why we're doing this is because Stolas uh, graciously sent me some wonderfully painted terrain, and I want to give back. I want to give back to him in a small way. Uh, by by getting some people over to his channel, give him a follow. He's doing a really cool event, a shedding light to uh, a people group in need. 
Uh, so uh, give him a follow, and then when uh, he's live next, make sure to check out his stream. He's not live now, but this is the, this is the best way that I could direct folks to his channel. It's can you, uh, can you spell that for me? S T O L A S. Uh, is there more to it than that? If there is, it's a DM in my. Di- oh, you know what? I'll just look it up on my phone. I mean, this is a channel, but it has no branding or anything on it. So, let me let me just confirm. I don't want to do this the wrong way. There's an underscore. Can you rate a channel that isn't live? You used to be able to host a channel that was that was live. Oh. Oh, it's at Stolas Live. That might be what it is. He was ch- he was chatting in uh, earlier in chat, chatting in chat. Man, I feel like in Discord I don't talk to a lot of people, but apparently I do. Well, I'll just Rex search up. the words. Oh yeah, here we go. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yes, this is it. Did you find it? Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, we'll let's let's just find out. You should use the shout out. What's the shout out feature? What the hell is a shout out? You don't stream professionally. Shout out here. stole us live. I'm just doing it. Okay. Join I did us it. in Hey, that's a hey, cool Hey, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Follow. Click the thing. They've got 20 right now. I'm looking at it. I want to see that number go up. Hell yeah. Hey, it went up by 4. That's something. Mike Genie is also visiting Black Side Studios. That's cool. Dota with the streamer session. I mean, I'm bad at the game. As long as you know that going in, I'm doing my part. Are you? Nice. You're welcome. Thank you, Atin J4. Now you can raid someone who is live, like the Zandra. Uh, I kind of I, I made a commitment to Stolas that I was going to raid him, and even though we have this other alternative, I don't want to go back on what I said I was going to do. Um, I'm going to see if it works. See if what works? I'm going to just hit raids, stole us live, and see if it works. Like right now? Yeah. Because all we're right. wrapping things up, baby. All right. Thank you guys for hanging out. Appreciate all the support you guys give with subs and whatnot. Looking forward to seeing you next Tuesday on July 4th for some kind of stream. We don't know what it is. In the meantime, follow Stolas so you can check out his stream when he is live next. Otherwise, I'll catch you next Tuesday. See you.